following is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. Welcome to ESPN on ABC's coverage of college football presented by K Jewelers. Part of ESPN's rivalry series presented by Jiffy Lou. Here come the Hawkeyes on a frigid day here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes set to host Nebraska. Hi again, everyone. Bob Wischusen, Matt Millen, Quint Kesnick will join us in just a minute from here at Kinnick Stadium. It feels like a Big Ten kind of football afternoon. We've got wind chill factors below 20 degrees. The stadium is packed, and we expect to see Big Ten type football. Both of these teams like to run it. The top three running backs finalists for the Doak Walker Award, they're all in the Big Ten, and Amir Abdul is on the list. And Amir Abdullah, get used to seeing him because you're going to be seeing him on Sundays as well. Not a real big guy. He's like 5'9". He's under 200 pounds, but great toughness, great vision, and ability to accelerate, and that's what he really does extremely well. And he'll be having to do that today because the defense that they're going against is formidable. And one of the top guys, number 71, Carl Davis, you'll be watching him on Sundays as well, too. He's a physical freak. He can take over a game, but he has help. Drew Ott on the outside. Kind of reminds me of an old All-American they had here, Jared DeVries. Same type of motor, same kind of never-stopping perseverance. And then Louis Trinka-Passat. While I love the name, I love his performance even better. He plays with a high motor. Those three will determine how well that Iowa defense plays today. It's become a rivalry between Nebraska and Iowa and will return to Iowa City in just a moment. College football presented by K Jewelers will continue after these messages and a word from our local ABC stations. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Welcome back to Iowa. Just about set for kickoff between Nebraska and the Hawkeyes. Bob Lashusa, Matt Millen upstairs, down on the field, Quint Kesnick. And Quint, injuries on both sides to talk about today. Uh, specifically Nebraska, who's lost back-to-back -back ball games. They've been hit really hard in terms of the injury department. They're going to be playing without four starters today. Let's start with the good news, though. Kenny Bell, wide receiver, 37 catches, had a head injury last week. He's been cleared to play. He warmed up, and he will start. Fellow wide receiver Alonzo Moore out with a turf toe. You lose two offensive linemen, center Mark Pellini, right tackle Zach Stirrup. They're both out. But I think the biggest loss is Randy Gregory, defensive end. Multiple injuries. He's a game-changing pass rusher, seven sacks. He will not play. He's in a, in a warm-up suit on the sideline. Add to that, safety Corey Cooper is out. This Nebraska team lacking depth in terms of wide receivers and defensive ends, Bob. And we were looking forward to seeing that matchup. Randy Gregory, number two on Mel Kite Piper's big board going up against Brandon Scherf, the left tackle, number six on Mel's big board. Not to happen today, though. Good kickoff return by Jonathan Parker out to about the 31-yard line. So here comes the junior Jake Rudock, 14-9 and nine in his career as a starter. And he has a hammer looking for a nail, a tailback, Mark Weissman, that helps him out. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. A hammer looking for a nail. That's exactly right, and Jake Rudock is going to have to rely on that hammer for most of this afternoon. And he's also going to have to rely on that offensive line. That's going to be the matchup, this offensive line against this defensive front. Iowa won last year in Lincoln against Nebraska. They have not won back-to-back -back games since the 1942-43 season. But our rivalry game gets underway with a Weissman carry out to about the 34-yard line, a gain of three, and let's check our impact players. Well, when you start talking about Iowa and offensive line, Randy Sheriff is their left tackle. He'll be a high pick, and he's a big, powerful guy. But Nate Gary, the safety from Nebraska, we will call his name a lot today. He's going to be active in the run game and in the pass game. Great instincts. We talked about Amir Abdullah being one of the three finalists for the Doak Walker Award. Brandon Scherf is one of the three finalists for the Outland Trophy, going to the best interior lineman in college football. And according to our draft guys, specifically Mel Kuyper, he's a top 10 pick. Weisman again for two more yards. Now it'll be third down and four. 
The thing about Brandon Sheriff that's impressive, he's a big, powerful guy, but he has good movement. And so they're not afraid to bring him around and pull him on certain things. He's also, he's a guy who, he kind of controls the offensive line. He will, he's the leader of that group. And as he goes, this offensive line goes. Rudock to throw for the first time. Pressure right up the middle. He'll take off and run. And he's got a first down. Malik Collins was right in the face of Jake Rudock, but couldn't bring him down. Yeah, that's number seven, Malik Collins. You can watch him on the inside, and that's a great job beating him to the inside. They isolated that right guard and gave him a two-way go. And Collins is the next man up in terms of rushing the passer. Gregory out of there. Collins has to kind of take that thing over. With a big first down for Iowa, and that has been the soft underbelly, Matt, of this Nebraska defense. They have been beaten to the perimeter the past couple of weeks, especially over and over again. Watch Willie Collins. He beats Walsh to the inside. Can Kanziri sees it right away and bounces it to the outside. If they, if they can get the edge on this Nebraska defense, which has had trouble the last two weeks, particularly on that left side of, of holding the edge, that's a big piece of the puzzle for their running game. And Ziri again. This time he's bottled up. A loss of a yard. David Santos got there first for Nebraska, but this is a defense that two weeks ago was embarrassed by Wisconsin to the tune of 581 rushing yards, 408 yards and four touchdowns by Melvin Gordon alone, and that just got Gordon through the first three quarters, and then last week they gave up 281 rushing yards to Minnesota. And they're well aware of it, and they know their biggest thing is, is fits. They need to fit the scheme. Rudock on the slant, wide open. Here's the tight end, Jake Doozy. And that's good for an Iowa first down. And so once you start getting your running game going and you start establishing that, then you start getting a little bit of bite up in, inside. And that opens up that second level. And Jake Doozy is the guy who's going to take care of that second level. Let's go down to Quinn. Yeah, Bob, the other thing in terms of that second level that Matt just mentioned, this is undersized linebacking core with small corners. So when running backs get to the perimeter, get to that second level, look for broken tackles. Well, it's Weissman back in now in the eye. And normally up the middle is not the place where big yards are found against the Nebraska defense. They've been okay between the tackles, but boy, when you watched the film and saw Melvin Gordon and even... Leidner, the quarterback for Minnesota, break contained last week. Yeah. There were chunk plays in the run game for both Wisconsin and Minnesota. Well, you know, every game is different, but Greg McMullen, number 90, that left defensive end, the last two weeks he struggled holding that edge. Play action. Plenty of room to run for Rudolph. Instead, he flips one. And it's the fullback, John Kenny, making only his third reception of the season, but that's good enough for a first down for Iowa. They're in the red zone. And, and what you'll find out of Rudock is a heady player. He's not going to make mistakes. He's going to take exactly what the defense gives him. He doesn't take a lot of chances, and that's a good thing and a bad thing. But if it's there, he'll find it. You saw it right there. Back to Kanziri at tailback. And you'll see a lot of two tight end single setback formations from the Hawkeyes. They'll run to that strong side. There's Kanziri with a cutback inside the 10. First and goal, Hawkeyes at the 6. That's just really well blocked again on the edge. And they're taking advantage of not setting the edge defensively. You're going to watch back here the, on the outside. Just really well blocked. They came down inside with a stun. They took advantage of a Kanziri. He just follows his eyes. Anytime you're going to have Gary making a lot of tackles, that's a bad sign 
for this Nebraska defense. Well, two of their top three tacklers are safeties. One of those, Corey Cooper, out of the lineup today. First and goal. Rudock, quarterback draw. Lost a yard. Malik Collins was not fooled. Look at this Nebraska defense, the two guys that are very active. Well, we know about Gary, and I think Gary's an ex excellent player. But Valentine, 98, and Collins on the inside, those are two guys that play extremely well. Malik, and they're tough to run against. Malik Collins was 48-0 and 0 as a high school heavyweight wrestler. Oh, That's why you like him. Oh, I love that guy. He plays like a good wrestler. Second and goal. Play action. Rudolph. So knocked away. Perfect coverage by Byerson Cockrell. He's normally the nickel, gets the start at safety today in place of Corey Cooper, who's hurt, so it thins out the secondary, but Cockrell with the breakup. That is extremely well done with Cockrell. Look at the position he has. He stays on that back hip, then eyes find the football, knocks it away. Extremely well played. Third down and goal. How big would it be for Nebraska to get a red zone stop to start the game? 12th play of the drive. Rudolph, another bullet in the end zone, and it's intercepted. Talk about a red zone stop. It's Nate Gary with his fifth interception of the season. And Nebraska gets a takeaway, and they've got the football. And Gary, all he was doing was called the robber position. He's just sitting down in the middle, and he's eyeballing the quarterback. This is perfectly well, this is perfectly executed by Gary. See him in the middle? Go find the ball. At Kinnick Stadium, coming into today, Iowa's offense was the only Big Ten offense without a red zone turnover. As our friendly Corsa would say, not so fast, my friend. Yeah, this is all man coverage. You can see it straight up. Here's Gary sitting in the back. Normally, he would be back here in what they call one free. But in this position, you're more like a robber. You sit to the middle, and you eyeball the quarterback. And once you see Rudock's eyes go to the tight end duty, you just... Make the play. Well played by Gary. Just a sophomore. The kid's got some great instincts. Only the fifth interception thrown by Jake Rudock this season. So now Tommy Armstrong on first down. Hands to Amir Abdullah. And he is right up the gut for a gain of about eight. And Tommy Armstrong is a weapon as well. Amir Abdullah gets all of the publicity, and rightfully so. He and Kenny Bell are spectacular players. But Tommy Armstrong is number three in the Big Ten in total offense per game. Yeah, just a sophomore and seemingly getting better week to week. And you know the best thing about Tommy Armstrong? He got better from the beginning of the season till now. Abdullah again. Maybe a yard. Josie Jewell made the stop. And let's take a look at our impact players when the Huskers have the football. Well, if you start talking about it, Nebraska, you have to talk about Amir Abdullah. He's a big play waiting to happen. And, and you have to look at Iowa. Carl Davis and Louis Trinker Passat, those two defensive interior linemen, those guys are outstanding players. They do a lot of things well. But as they go, this defense goes. Third down and one. Watch the inside. Ball start. Start offense number 78. Five yard penalty for down. Gibbons Price, the right tackle, turns it into third down and six. In his seventh year as the head coach at Nebraska, Bo Pelini. Only he and Nick Saban have won nine or more games the last six years in a row. But how much patience do Nebraska fans still have with their head coach? That'll be something that we'll talk about throughout the game today. As last season, they lost this end of the regular season rivalry game to Iowa. Third down and six. Play clock winding down. Empty backfield for Armstrong. Wants the football and they get the playoff. Quarterback draw and it's there. Armstrong into the secondary. Weaves his way for a big third down conversion. Out to about the 28-yard line. Armstrong sees what he sees is man coverage all the way around. See this? And there's no one back here except the free safety. Nobody in the middle of the field. Take advantage of it. Let it develop and then flow. 
Good read by Armstrong. He read it quickly and he picked up a big first down. He's the second leading rusher for Nebraska behind Amir Abdullah. He's closing in on 700 yards rushing for the season. Amani Cross lowers his shoulders and picks up seven on first down. And Amani Cross is the bruiser at 230 pounds, a really nice compliment to Amir Abdullah at only 195 pounds. Yeah, he's a powerful guy, but he's taking advantage of that right side. Good job there by Moody, the, the, uh, the guard, uh, working on, on Carl Davis. If you can get Davis blocked, you got a shot. again and that time they couldn't block Trink of Passat. No gain on second down and now it's third down and a long two close to three. This is really interesting what Reeves inside does the center. So you're going to watch right inside. Here's Trink of Passat who makes the play and Davis up top. Davis is going to get pressure. See how they give ground to try to capture it so that they can gain ground with the running back. It's really interesting. This interior three from Nebraska do a very good job of doing that. That's Amir Abdullah in motion. A sprint out that way for Armstrong. Wide open is Abdullah, but Armstrong threw it behind him. The motion for Abdullah accomplished exactly what Nebraska hoped. He was wide open in the flat, but Sami Armstrong couldn't put the football on his running back. Yeah, and that's a blown coverage. You never let a running back run clean like that. They have two guys coming off the edge to put pressure on Armstrong. He's got to slow himself down and make that throw because Abdullah had a big play. Sam Foltz, number four in the Big Ten in net punting, set to kick it away. So Nebraska gets the red zone turnover and the takeaway. Now it's Matt Vandenberg from his own 14 yard line. Gets to the edge. Pretty good return. Lost the football. Was he down or did he cough it up? That's it's another thunder. giveaway by Iowa. Nebraska has it back at the Hawkeye 34 yard line. Looks like Chris Jones got the recovery for the Huskers. Yeah, it's out. That's that's a pure fumble. It's a good call by the officials. Now, you've talked to any coach at any level of football, and the first thing they'll tell you is we can't give the ball away. You can't beat yourself. Well, in this first, what, how many minutes? The first 10 minutes of the game, they've given it away twice. And off to Abdullah to the 32-yard line. Drew Ott made the stop, but two turnovers by Iowa in the first nine minutes of the football games got Nebraska within striking distance. What Nebraska's offense tries to do is they try to spread you, and they try to get you running as a defensive line, and in that movement, that's where their Abdullah has a great, does a great job of using his vision and his short area quickness gets through the hole to second level. at this time and gets bottled up at the 30. It'll bring up third down and six. Hard to believe that Kirk Ferentz has been in Iowa City now for 16 years. A three-time Big Ten Coach of the Year. Hayden Fry, Bo Schembechler, and Joe Paterno, along with Kirk Ferentz, the only three-time winners or more of Coach of the Year in the Big Ten. Well, I'm a big Kirk Ferentz fan. I think he does as good a job of any coach in the country at developing his players and also evaluating high school players. Four-man rush on third and six. They get a free rusher that Armstrong avoids, but he can barely get back to the line of scrimmage. Carl Davis eventually brought him down. And now what do you do if you're Nebraska? Fourth down and a long six close to seven. This is too far to try a field goal. 
Now it looks like they're going to bring Drew Brown out, and they're going to attempt in frigid temperatures close to a 50-yarder. Yeah, that's just shy of 50 yards. They'll mark it as, as a 49-yarder, but it's more like 49 and a half. Brown's long on the season is 44. This one from 49. Well wide to the right. So in spite of two turnovers by Iowa in the opening 12 minutes, they've got the football back in pretty good field position and we're still scoreless. And the bigger piece of the puzzle is their defense came to play. She sees as they made their annual pre-Thanksgiving hospital visits in the Lincoln area. Student athletes speaking with caregivers, signing autographs, and hopefully everyone is having a safe and happy start to the holiday season as it's been anything but safe for Iowa so far. They've given the ball away twice, but they dodged a bullet, missed field goal, and a jet sweep on first down. Jonathan Parker gets to the edge, and he picks up about five. Let's go back to that third down a moment ago. Oh, conversion failure for Nebraska. Yes, yeah, this is Givens Price, number 78. And there's a thing called cadence. It's what, what it is is your call at the line of scrimmage by the quarterback. Well, Givens Price was the guy who jumped earlier, and he went to make sure he heard the call completely, and in the process of that, heard nothing and allowed Nate Meyer to get around him. That's something they have to clean up. And Ziri with a cutback to the 40-yard line. It'll be third down and short. Zaire Anderson on the tackle for Nebraska. Let's check in with Quinn. Bob, it's a clap cadence that Nebraska uses, very similar to Ohio State. And the quarterback Armstrong claps, but there's a wall of sound from the north end zone. And Price is out there on an island. He didn't hear the clap. Obviously, he's just a stationary target. Third down and two for Iowa. We'll see if they can pick one up. A go with Weissman, and he has the first down, plowing forward to the 45-yard line. Well, that's obviously a spot, Matt, where you spend all week preparing for crowd noise. The clap cadence is designed to try and deal with the crowd noise as best you can, but that hurt Nebraska on that third down conversion attempt. Yeah, and that's something that they can clean up, but he'll have to tune his ears into that. But the guy Weissman there is a guy who his ears are always tuned in to his, his name being called and his number being called. He has been so such a, a steadying force for this Iowa offense. Kanziri again. Kevin Williams helped out by Daniel Davey on the stop for the Huskers. So now it's second down and long. Yeah, Williams was able to make the tackle. The play was made by a blitzer coming off the edge and forced Kenzeri back inside. Williams was able there to be able to take advantage of the call from the sideline. here Malik Collins against Welsh inside this is going to be the second time that he beats him he beats him like a drum first time he takes the hard inside second time he posts that inside shoulder and gets right to the edge Malik Collins Malik Collins they're gonna have to help on Collins because Welsh is struggling right now with him third down and 20 for an offense that is not a chunk play group Rudak has all day he's gonna look for a chunk play the scene and a flag comes out. Cavante Martin Manley was the intended receiver and he got held. Looks like they might have Byerson Cockrell as he was trying to stay with Cavante Martin Manley. Pass interference, defense number 10. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Check that, Josh Kalou is called for the foul. 
Well, it's still Martin Manley, and they, they know you got Kalu in the slot. He's got to stay on top, but you can see the grab right there. Yeah, and that what that really is, that kind of a hold, that is about not having a lot of confidence. He can run with Martin Manley. You, all you have to do is get a, jo uh, a, 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 jo uh, a jolt on him and then get up the field. You can run with him. What a huge penalty as well. Third down and 20 becomes first down in plus territory. Weissman on what should be the final play of the first quarter for a gain of close to five. So we're still scoreless, but Iowa back in Nebraska territory at the end of the first quarter. And we'll return to Iowa City in just a moment. College football presented by K Jewelers will continue after these messages and a word from our local ABC stations. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Bob Wischusen, Matt Millen, Quinn Kesnick. Happy Thanksgiving from that guy to you and yours. Iowa has turned the ball over twice. A red zone interception thrown by Jake Rudock on their first possession. And Matt Vandenberg fumbled a punt, and yet Nebraska unable to get on the board. And now the Hawkeyes start the second quarter with second down and five in Nebraska territory. They stretch it again with Jordan Kanziri. Strong run and a first down. Kanziri has been nursing hip and ankle injuries all season. Mark Weissman, of course, is the workhorse, but Kanziri has a little bit of a burst to the edge, and that, that has been the areas we talked about that Nebraska's defense has struggled. Yeah, they have, and, and Kanziri, when he's healthy, is a pretty good little player. And he's a guy who can get to the edge, where Weissman is the guy who's the hammer between the tackles. one down the sideline and a miscommunication with Cavante Martin Manley who broke off his route at about the 15 yard line. Cockrell came on a blitz and pressured Rudolph. Yeah, and he was untouched. Cockrell came, nobody accounted for him, and Rudock had to be able to make a decision just to throw the ball away. And it's a smart decision. Cockrell comes up inside. That should be accounted for. You have the four down in him, and here he comes. And so live for another day. Throw the ball away, you're okay. Confusion, Nebraska trying to get lined up on defense, second down and 10. They rush four. Rudock underneath. Very close to a first down, the tight end, Ray Hamilton, and it looks to be good enough to move the chains for Iowa. Hamilton and Doozy are a big part of this offense, and, be, and especially in today's game, because Nebraska's linebackers have struggled a little bit in that second level. I, I would say if there's one area of this Nebraska defense that's not up to their normal standard, it has been these backers this year. They lost Michael Rose to a knee injury in summer camp. He was a true freshman that started in Mike linebacker last season. Rudolph on a rollout. Dumps one, a little bit too high on the carom. Intended for John Kenny, almost intercepted. Zaire Anderson on a dive, almost scooped it up. Nearly another Iowa turnover. And an opportunity when that ball's in the air. When that ball's in the air, the difference between a good play and a great play is go get it. Now he just flips it up there. Right here, it's anybody's call. Anderson missed opportunity. down to five. Weissman to the 24-yard line, a gain of nearly four. Malik Collins on the tackle. It'll be third down and about seven. Malik Collins is a heck of a player. He can play inside and outside. He has great quickness. You saw him a few times working inside on the guard. But the thing you love about an interior lineman, when you can get outside and defend the edge from the inside, that's saying something. Now John Papuchas, defensive coordinator, told us he's a throwback. 
not only is he a state champion high school wrestler, he's not on social media, he just plays football and doesn't pay attention. Rudolph with a blitz coming. Beats the blitz underneath to Martin Manley. Devante Martin Manley on his way to breaking Darrell Johnson Koulianos' all-time record for receptions at Iowa. Only nine short coming into today. Not a real burner, but what he does do is understand how to beat a, a defender. And Kalu is off on him. So he'll take two steps at Kalu, get him back, getting him his back pedal, and then come across the formation. I don't care how fast you are, once I've gotten that separation, I'll just take advantage of it for the first down. Iowa has had the ball for 12 of the game's first 18 minutes. And they've got another first down with the clock winding down. Kirk Ferentz calls a timeout from the sideline. So we'll step aside. The Hawkeyes back in the red zone when we return. And Ohio State then at 3.30 on ESPN, number three Florida State. And their yearly showdown with the Gators. It all begins tomorrow at noon. How would you like ABC. to be that guy? That's see. a bad seat. That's a high seat. I, I rarely even see that guy move up there. I'm not so sure he's not frozen stiff already. There's no way he's warm. Kanziri in a tailback, first and 10 Iowa. After the timeout, they run to the short side. And Kanziri gets to about the 10 yard line. Nate Gary came up and made the stop for the Huskers after a game of about four. Okay, so Nebraska has had a problem defending the edge. Iowa doesn't really have a real speed guy except for Kanziri. But here's the thing. They continue to go to the edge, and first down has been very good to Iowa. They've been getting at least four or five yards and setting up second and manageable, very manageable. I, uh, Nebraska has to be able to do a better job off that edge. Not much for Kanziri on second down. Brings up a big third down. Third down from inside the 10. And Iowa's offense has been a very efficient red zone offense when they've gotten there. 32 touchdowns. This is their 40th trip, but their only trip so far to the red zone today. They turned it over on their opening possession when Rudock was picked off by Gary. Well, they're not gonna, they're not having a lot of success running inside. Most of that's Malik Collins. And when they've gotten pressure on the passer on Ruda, it's also been Malik Collins. You bring pressure here for the Huskers? Yeah, I do. You'll take a chance. Roll the dice, go man outside, keep somebody in the hole. Four man rush, blitz off the edge though. Ruda was the ball coming forward. Is that a fumble? It looks like they ruled that the ball was out, and that is a fumble. It's picked up by Trevor Roach. Zaire Anderson came off the edge and hit Jake Rudolph. Now the decision for possibly the replay booth, was this a arm moving forward incomplete pass or is that turnover number three? That's a fumble. That's a fumble. He hit the ball before his arm ever started moving. Right there. His, ball, his arm was going back to start a forward motion. The, mo the forward motion was started by the hit. The ruling on the field was that was a fumble recovered by the defense. The previous play is under further review. You can see all around this stadium, all the fans in black and gold making a motion saying his arm's coming forward. And they're going to go upstairs to the replay booth just to make sure. But, Matt, you're pretty emphatic, and it looks like you're right. This ball is out of his control before his arm starts moving forward. The fans saw the ball travel forward. Right. So they figured that was an indication that he still had it and an incomplete pass. But here's another look, and it was ruled a fumble on the field. It'll stay that way, I believe. Uh, Zaire Anderson is the one who starts the forward motion. His arm's going backward. Zaire Anderson comes off the edge and hits the arm, which is what you're taught to do, slap to the ball, and that actually starts his forward motion. You're going to see it right, the arm's coming back, boom. He forces that ball forward, and that's the impetus for the fumble. That's a great call by Nebraska. After review, the ruling on this field is confirmed. It's a fumble recovered by Nebraska. First down. That's Mike Cannon, our referee. 
delivering another game changing momentum changing play as Jake Rudock now has a red zone interception to go along with a red zone fumble again Iowa today Matt coming into this game the only Big Ten offense without a red zone turnover they've now turned it over twice in the red zone here in the first half and we're still scoreless. Amir Abdullah finds a cutback lane. About six yards on first down as Reggie Spearman made the stop. I think a couple eyes might be on ESPN tomorrow night, 7.45. When Auburn and Alabama play in the Iron Bowl. I know mine will be. Second and four, stretch play to Abdullah. Flag down. Good for a first down carry for Abdullah, but it looks like it might go against Nebraska. Holding, holding, offense, number 35. Half the distance to the goal, replay second down. So that'll move the ball back inside the Huskers 10 yard line. Watching on film, Iowa, not a team that seems to dial up a ton of pressure because they've got so much faith in that front four. But you wonder if at some point they might try to heat up Tommy Armstrong if they can with Nebraska backed up inside their own 10 yard line. I'd be careful as Armstrong's feet can beat you. You get caught in a blitz, he could take it to the house. They'll keep it on the ground with Abdullah, and he can't even make it back to the nine yard line. Eight of a yard. So now it's third down and 12, and the penalty really hurt the Huskers as they're just gonna try if they can and keep the drive alive and avoid giving Iowa would be great field position and if the Hawkeyes can get a stop. Well, this whole thing has been dominated by the defensive line of Iowa. We talked about Jacob Passat and Davis and Ott and Meyer on the outside. Those four have been the difference for this Iowa defense. Armstrong, well protected. That ball comes out on, and it's intercepted. John Rattermilk walks into the end zone with a Hawkeye touchdown. Carl Davis got the pressure on Armstrong. They brought a blitz. Coupled with those four down, and Davis is the difference. Watch pick number 71, Carl Davis. And they're going to bring, you see the coming off the edge, but Davis gets one-on-one. -on -one. And if you're going to single him, chances are he's going to win. And Loudermilk, with his instincts, Johnny on the spot, takes it back. Iowa turns it over twice in the red zone. But then they get a takeaway for a score. The whole story between Iowa and Nebraska so far has been turnovers. And the first score of the game, a John Loudermilk pick six. Davis right here is the guy who makes the play it happens because they're going to bring a blitz and they try to pick it up and Gibbons price on the outside has to come down inside it's kind of an awkward position see how he folds back inside and Davis has a spin move on him they're gonna try to throw the ball deep but Davis gets his hands up hits the ball obviously and then it's in for a score it's a protection that should have been handled but because you had such a powerful man inside of Carl Davis, he's able to make the play. Iowa gives the ball away three times, but the only turnover so far for Nebraska results in a touchdown. Kenny Bell has to take a knee in the end zone, and we'll come right back and see if the Huskers can answer. And then yesterday, Thursday, that became a work day because this is a Friday game where they're trying to build a rivalry between the Huskers and the Hawks. 
Bob Schusen, Matt Millen, Quint Kesnick, Iowa City, first and ten for Nebraska, down by a touchdown. On a rollout, it's Armstrong. Tucks it under. And he's out to about the 28, maybe the 29-yard line before he's brought down by Josie Jewell. As still Nebraska without a passing yard on offense. They've got 43 rushing yards and zero passing yards so yeah, far. If they're going to do anything with its offense, it has to have some balance. They have to be able to throw the football. And Armstrong's hurt. That's not a good sign. You look at this, and the all 22, this is what they're trying to hit. They're going to try to come back here, and here's your secondary throw. Both are covered. He has to be able to pull it down and take off. But Armstrong's feet are such a big part of this offense. If they miss that piece, that's not a good sign for Nebraska. And as you talked about earlier, they're missing two pieces on the offensive line with Zach Sterup out with an ankle injury, the right tackle. And Mark Pellini, who had a pretty severe ankle injury last week early against Minnesota. So you're down two starters on the offensive line. Now Tommy Armstrong is hurt. There's Riker Fife, the former walk-on, sophomore quarterback that backs up Armstrong. Now that's not Armstrong's throwing arm, obviously, but he's holding that left arm lip. And so now we'll see what they can do with Riker Fife. Q, you're down there on the Nebraska sideline. Yeah, Armstrong is not going over to the to the uh, benches, actually. The training staff appears to be looking at his ribs and his midsection. Cadence has been an issue so far from ne Nebraska, especially out of the shotgun. Let's see how the backup handles it. Second down and a long six, close to seven. Riker Fife, a jet sweep to the freshman, DeMornay Pearson L. And he's nowhere near the first down as Jordan Lomax makes the stop. So now third down coming up for Nebraska. So you have Fife in the game. Right now I'm playing for a run the whole way, especially on that first play. And now it's third and four. It's manageable. So I'm going to tighten my coverage and still get after this. Maybe bring pressure here. Force him to have to make a real accurate throw. And it looks like that's what they're going to do. Riker Fife has only attempted nine passes this season and ten in his career. Be careful with the quarterback draw here. High throw, and that looks like the quarterback cold coming off the bench. That can't convert on third and four, so it'll be a punt from Nebraska. If that were Armstrong, he'd still be running. There was nobody there. They spread everybody out. Secondary was gone. There's nothing in the middle, but it's not Armstrong. Instead, it's five, and they did exactly what we thought they would do. Tight coverage, make him be very accurate. You can see the medical staff looking at the midsection of Tommy Armstrong. We'll see if he can get back in there. As Iowa with a 7-0 lead, the only point scored by the Iowa defense. And a shanked punt. Out of bounds at about the Hawkeye 40-yard line. Shankadelic. At the 38-yard line. That looked like a Matt Millen 5-iron by Sam even, Fultz. I don't even know what that is. Neither did Fultz. <laughs> Yikes. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary, and Matt's been about turnovers. Yeah, it's turnovers, and it's been running to the edge. You look outside, 36 of those 42 yards of Kanzari is, is on the edge. And then the Nebraska defense was able to come up big in the red zone with turnovers. And then just when you ta start talking about defense, when Carl Davis comes through with a sack and... John Loudermill takes it back for six. Really, this has been a defensive game. Not a lot of offense shown up so far. Great field position for Iowa after the shanked punt by Fultz. He's reading man coverage and the safety drop down. Weissman on first down. For four yards, brought down by Trevor Roach in our first opportunity to head back to the studio and say hi to John Saunders. Well, hi, and happy Thanksgiving to you guys here with the Wells Fargo Getting It Done report. Western Kentucky and Marshall. Marshall trying to get into one of the 12 spots that are open. Brandon Doughty with a pass to Tawan Taylor, 75 yards. They still lead. Bob and Matt. All right, John, thanks very much. And it is an Iowa lead over Nebraska. Here's Kanziri. Nowhere to go. Nate Gary read that from the
the start. Knights nice through and makes the tackle for a loss of a couple. Now it'll be third down and eight. Then we start talking about instincts with Nate Gary. He has a, he has a very good feel of what's happening. Now he knows they're going to try to get to that edge. Kanzeri's in there for a reason. And so all he does is just let it develop and run inside out. This kid, you're going to watch him play on Sundays. Just a sophomore whose best football is ahead of him. That's just what Bo Pelini told us as well. Thinks he's an NFL player. Third down and eight. Four-man rush. Rudolph well protected. Bullets one over the middle. Somehow it squeezes through. And it's scooped up by Martin Manley for a Hawkeye first down. He Zaire. was bracketed, and somehow the ball got yeah, through. Yeah, Zaire Anderson thought he was going to have a play on this ball, but Rudock does a great job of threading the needle. This is a really small window. See, Anderson's on the front side. He doesn't get his head turned around in time. 15-yard game and a third down Hawkeye conversion. Now it's Weissman back in, a tailback, as Zaire Anderson had a chance to knock one down and did not. Play action, man coverage on the outside. Rudolph lets the rock develop, and was that beautifully run? Cavante Martin Manley. Now this is on the outside. Yeah, this is on Rudolph's shoes. This is very good job of recognizing what you have. Look at this. You got one, two, three, four, five, plus three. That's an eight-man front, and he knows what he has on the outside locked up. So they go play action, and then just come across to the outside. He knows he has Martin Manley. Well done by Rudolph. Devante Martin Manley. Only six catches shy of setting a brand new Iowa record for most career catches. Kanziri turns the corner to the 14-yard line. Six yards on first down, run out by Trevor Roach. It's Ray Hamilton there. Anytime you start talking about getting to the edge, you have to start talking about Ray Hamilton, number 82, and that's a fantastic job. Normally, you see tight ends, they latch on. Hamilton doesn't. All he does is just bury his helmet in his chest and keep his legs moving. That's well done. of this is Rudock checking to a run at the line. He's close to a 4.0 GPA, microbiology pre-med major. So needless to say, there's brains inside that helmet. He can diagnose and figure things out at the yeah, line. Needless to say, this is, he had classes you and I never dreamed of. Never even heard of, couldn't pronounce. <laughs> but he gets to the line of scrimmage and sees the whole field. And he knows what he can get to. And what he also knows is when he has Weissman, he's going to get him behind Brandon Scherf, that left tackle, and take advantage of the movement. Third down and one. Left side. Weissman, and that looks to be an Iowa first down and then some. First and goal for the Hawkeyes. Now, Kirk Ferentz told us with Jake Rudock that not only has he been underappreciated, and nothing affects them. But they've had several Wednesdays this season where they've adjusted their practice schedule because Jake Rudock has to go to organic chemistry class, where obviously you would have found us sitting at the front lab table back in the day. Yeah, absolutely. Organic would have meant to us, what are we eating that day? Oh, organic. Got it. What's at the media buffet? <laughs> And now Rudock, it looks like, wants a timeout. Kirk Ferentz is going to let the clock wind down and communicate with his quarterback, call it Church. from the sideline. So we'll step aside. Three and a half to go in the opening half, and Iowa in striking distance again. Eastern. No other night is Monday night. That game also available live on Watch ESPN. Bob Schuze and Matt Millen, Quinn Kesnick back here in Iowa City. First and goal for Iowa at the nine-yard line. And Matt, it's been good defense so far in the red zone for Nebraska. How about first down here? Well, what you're going to have to do is turn it over to Valentine, 98, and, uh, and Malik inside number seven. And you have to defend these edges on the outside. 
That's where they're going. With a cutback to the five-yard line. Down to about the three. It'll be second and goal from inside the four. Yeah, I believe Malik Collins and Valentine, they're going to have to handle the middle. You saw Gary come down fast, and that's exactly what they have to be, be able to do. Both Kanziri and Weissman, this is where they want to get. Sheriff does a nice job of creating that lane back inside. Right here, I'm run blitzing this thing. Take my chances on the outside. I'm bringing nine guys to the line of scrimmage. Flags down. All start. That's a big help for Nebraska. False start. Offense number 82. Five yard penalty. Second down. First Iowa penalty. And this is a team that has been spectacular in terms of keeping their penalties down all season. Yeah, that's normally the hallmark sign of a Kirk Ferentz coach team. They they are usually not sloppy. They're very disciplined. So now you have a little bit more room. Second and goal from the nine. This is still, oh, they spread everything out. I don't believe I was going to uh, trust Rudolph with any kind of, oh, Kanziri's back in. They swing it to Kanziri in the flat. Makes a man miss. Now gets tripped up at the five. He almost spun past Nate Gary, but Gary tripped him up, and now it's third down and goal. That Gary's a terrific player. He sees the field. He's very active. He's inside out. Has a good sense of what's going on. Third and goal at the four. So now if you're Nebraska, do you bring pressure on third down? I do. I put it back on that quarterback. I put everything back in him to make a nice, tight throw. Play clock at 10. Still Kanziri in to the left of Rudolph. Timeout called by Bo Pelini. They had some mix-up on the back end. Charge timeout, Nebraska. They're first. So Bo Pelini spends a timeout. And you wonder how many chances that Bo Pelini and this defensive coaching staff are now going to have to take if Tommy Armstrong can't get back in the yeah. game. And now you've got a backup quarterback out there for the Huskers. You fall behind by 14 here. That's a really deep hole for them to dig out yeah, of. So this is a huge down because they've got to be able to hold it to at least attempting the field goal. And so I'm going to roll the dice a little bit. And so I'm going to blitz. I'm going to put pressure back onto the quarterback to be able to, A, have to make a quick decision, and then, B, have to be very accurate with the ball if, in fact, they're going to have to throw that thing. So from the flip side, what I would do if I'm Iowa, and I know they're not a big moving the pocket team, but that's what I would do. I would take Rudock and move him a little bit to avoid any kind of pressure that's coming. Keep in mind, when, when Nebraska has had their miscues defensively, it's because guys have, have messed up assignments. It's not because schematically it's been bad. It's because they've, they've blown blitzes and fits. Third down and goal inside the five. Play action. Rudock on a bootleg. Throws it in the end zone for Martin Manley, and it's incomplete. And who was there in coverage again? Nate Gary. So they do hold to a field goal attempt. That's another big red zone stop for the Nebraska defense. And it was exactly what we thought I would do. Move the pocket. Get it to the outside. They were anticipating they are going to have pressure coming up inside. So they went with play action, and then roll him to the outside. He needed to set his feet. He didn't have to rush himself right there. It was going to be a tough throw because of Gary's coverage. So Marshall Kane from only 22 yards out. Tax on three for Iowa. But Nebraska doing a good job of limiting Iowa to only a field goal. The University of Lead only 10-0, in spite of the fact Matt Millen and they have dominated field position. And Quinn Kesnick down in the Nebraska sideline. Who do you think's going in at quarterback here for the Huskers, Q? Uh, Tommy Armstrong will come back uh, for Nebraska. Had his ribs looked at, sat down on the bench. I think he's fine. Look for them to throw on first down. Yeah, that's huge for Nebraska. If they can have Armstrong back on the field at quarterback. And it'll be out to the 25-yard line on the touchback. Let's head back to John Saunders. Thanks a lot, guys. Taco Bell Studio Update. Central Florida, South Florida. 
Burnell Hall grabs his one. Sees an opening. This is a tough run. And then shows the speed. Cut and dives to the end zone. 14-0 Central Florida. First and 10 for Nebraska. It's 10-0 Iowa here at Kinnick Stadium. Tommy Armstrong has yet to complete a pass. No passing yards at all for Nebraska. Good throw over the middle. First catch of the day made by Jordan Westerkamp, and that should be good enough for a first down. And it is coming up on the Capital One Halftime Report. John Saunders and Mac Brown will discuss TCU's domination of the Horns last night. LSU surviving at A&M. And how about the Bruins going after the Pac-12 South? Armstrong looks for a big play to Bell. And that might have been intercepted. Desmond King picks it off. And Iowa has the ball back with plenty of time to add to their lead before halftime. Desmond King had perfect position on the receiver. Watch him hang the outside. Now get on his hip. Bell never really he had an opportunity to be able to get between the defender and the throw. But King did a great job of coming back underneath and making that play. Desmond King, kind of the classic Iowa player, under-recruited. He committed to Central Michigan, then Ball State, and then finally, late in the process, Iowa made an offer. And he ends up in the Big Ten as a mid-season first-team All-Big Ten pick from ESPN.com. And comes up with the interception, his second of the season. And Rudock tries to go to work. He wants a bomb down the sideline. Incomplete. Intended for Damon Powell. And that was excellent coverage by Josh Mitchell. Mitchell does have good, uh, good coverage. But both of those throws, the last two throws that we saw, were not good throws. That ball, if they're going to make that ball, you got to get a little bit more air under that thing. This thing hangs in the air just a little bit too much. And on the interception earlier, from Armstrong, that ball needed to be thrown out a little further, and Kenny Bell was on top of that. Still plenty of time for the Hawks. They've got a minute, 16 seconds, and a timeout. Rudock finds power. The ball's ripped out. Josh Kalou pulled it away, and it's another takeaway for Nebraska. What a huge play by the Huskers defense with 107 to go before halftime. Joshua Kalu is a true freshman getting the start today at nickel. Byerson Cockrell moving to safety with Corey Cooper out. So Matt, how about this change of momentum as Tommy Armstrong after throwing the pick right back out there trying to score points before halftime. Yeah, they've got to get something out of this. This is the best field position they've had. They've got to be able to at least get three. Iowa shows us that they're bringing pressure. And they do. Armstrong steps up and is brought down. Tommy Armstrong Quinton the ball Alston. Brought him down, but it was the pressure from Bo Bauer out on the edge that changed the protection up front. Yeah, and forced him to come back up inside, and Austin's able to clear it up. This Iowa defense has met every challenge so far in this half. Incomplete intended for Bell. Now it's third down and 13 with 36 seconds to go in the half. Nebraska still with two timeouts. And doesn't Amir Abdullah have to be more involved in this offense? He has not touched the ball these last couple of possessions yeah, at all. And, and it, it's been their position down below and being tight in their line of scrimmage. But right here, what you want to do defensively for Iowa is show them one thing. You're going to sit in the zone, but you want to give them the look that you may bring pressure. Strong deals it down the sideline. CP Carter inside the 10. The tight end leaked out. And Iowa lost track of Carter. And now it's 
first and goal on a big this third down conversion. That whole thing comes down to Armstrong. He had great sense of knowing where the line of scrimmage was because it was close. He, as he approached it, he had that in the back of his head. As you're going to see, the line of scrimmage is right here. And as he takes off to run, he has a feel, and that's really well done. Interesting personnel group now in the game for Nebraska. They've got Terrell Newby out there, a pair of tailbacks to either side of Armstrong on first and goal. Play action. It's open in the back of the end zone, and Armstrong's got a touchdown pass. It's Amir Abdullah who leaked up the seam, and Nebraska gets the touchdown, and they are on the board before halftime. That whole seven points is completely on Armstrong. It was his feet for the big play down to the sideline. And in this one, again, he's able to find Amir Abdullah. You're going to see Abdullah in the backfield right here. He's going to sneak down right inside. And they just blow the coverage on him. There's no one on him. Their eyes are in the backfield, and Abdullah's behind them. Not a good thing. 20 seconds to go in the half, and Nebraska turns the turnover into a touchdown, and it looks like we'll have a field goal margin at the break. Yeah, here's Amir Abdullah, and so you have to be able to account for him over here, but you're going to watch. He's just going to come right through. Nobody even looks at him, and yeah, one of those backers had to have him. You got the outside backer. Bo Bauer taking the guy to the outside, and then on the inside, you had Alston in there and Jewel in there and just ran right past him. So a blown coverage, and the net result is Armstrong's able to find him for the six. And that was not an easy catch. No. Amir Abdullah did a really good job of adjusting to that ball that was thrown behind him. As Tommy Armstrong, that was a fastball. So Amir Abdullah with his third receiving touchdown of the season and his 21st overall touchdown this year. And remember, Nebraska starts the second half with the ball as well. They won the toss and deferred their option. So they have a chance to string together possessions here. And how big now does the strip by the true freshman Joshua Kalou loom as Iowa was in position with a timeout and plenty of time to go down and maybe make it a three-possession game at halftime. That is a really, really heady play by Kalou. A bunt of a kickoff that Parker will field on a hop at the six. Brought down at the 30-yard line on Saturday night on ESPN. It's college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels at 745 Eastern. It's the Iron Bowl. Alabama had Bryant Denny this year in Tuscaloosa in a rematch of last year's epic game with Auburn. Saturday night, 745 Eastern, also live on Watch ESPN. So now 13 seconds to go in the half, and with only one timeout, the Hawkeyes will take a knee, and that will take us to halftime. Kirk Ferentz will tell his team, don't beat yourself, because that's all you did in the first half. Wouldn't you think Bo Pelini would say the same to his team as we head down to Quint on the field? Coach, outside of the turnovers, what was the single key development in that first that, half? That's the whole game right now. You know, we've been playing well, but uh, you got to hang on to the ball. Thanks, Coach. It was all turnovers yeah. for both sides Completely. in the first half. So the defense is making game-changing plays, and we've got a 10-7 game at halftime with Iowa on top of Nebraska. We'll head to the studio in the Capital One Halftime Report in a moment. This presentation of college football presented by K Jewelers will continue after this message and a word from our local ABC stations. You're watching ESPN on ABC. K Jewelers, part of ESPN's Rivalry Series, presented by Jiffy Lou. Just about set for the start of the third quarter between Nebraska and Iowa. Hawkeyes with a field goal lead. Bob Wischusen, Matt Millen, Quinn Kesnick will join us in a moment. Turnovers. That was basically the entire story of the first half. Yeah, you know, if you look, go back and look at that offensive line for Iowa, they did everything they wanted to do. They wanted to control the ball. They did. But what they didn't do is they didn't count on miscues, and they had a bunch of them. Four of them in the first half. This game really right now is defined by not what they've done, but what they failed to do, and that is hang on to the football. As they did it to the tune of four times in the first half, and they still have a lead. That tells you how dominating they were. 
in the other parts of the game. Only a three-point three, a three point difference, however, is, is still anybody's game. And you look at the stats, well, and look at the time of possession. More than double. More than double, almost double the, the total yards. So Iowa's been in complete control. They've just handed it over. It was a turnover before halftime that created the short field for Nebraska and gave them their first score. So Jake Rudock will have to sit on the sideline and watch Tommy Armstrong start the third quarter with the football as Nebraska won the toss, deferred their option. So they'll get the first possession of the second half. And Kenny Bell lets this one bounce through the back of the end zone. And let's check in with Quinn. Third down defense must be improved uh, if you're Bo Pelini in this Nebraska Cornhusker squad. That's what he told me. Gave me that as one of the bullet points. Second will be the right tackle position. They've really struggled uh, backing up today, given Sprice with a false start penalty, a holding penalty. They made a change late in that second quarter to number 59, Matt Finnett. So look for hopefully improvement if you're a Nebraska fan there. And then lastly, just be survivors. This team is banged up. It's the last game of the season. They're mucking this game up, trying to keep it close and find a way. And quit to your point, Gibbons Price on the bench, and it is Matt, Matt Finnan that will start the second half at right tackle as he ended the first half. On a keeper, face to face, Tommy Armstrong is stood up by Nate Meyer. A loss of a yard and a half, and we have an offensive line injury, it looks like, for the Cornhuskers on the same play. They are already banged up down two starters, and that's Ryan Reeves, the center, who's in there in place of Mark Pellini, the regular starting center, who injured his ankle last week against Minnesota. And that's the look of a head coach that has seen this script play out all too often this year. The Reeves... Ryan Reeves is a good player. Ryan Reeves does some things inside that are you normally don't see out of the center position. And this would this this obviously would not be good for them. So Nebraska going three deep on the depth chart now at center as it looks like Paul Thurston number 55 who would be the third string center is now over snapping the ball a few times to Tommy Armstrong getting warmed up to come in. Thurston does not even appear on the two deep offensive line wise for Nebraska. Let's take a look and see if he could pick up number 65 getting rolled up on. Yeah you can see it. He is getting rolled up. It's Carl Davis. Ouch. That looks a lot like the injury that Mark Pellini suffered last week against Minnesota. And so if you're you see Thurston coming in and it's not a guy who's had a lot of experience. And so if I'm the Iowa defensive coordinator right now I'm going to put uh, Trinka Passat or Carl Davis right on his face and welcome him to the middle of this game. <laughs> you take a guy like Carl Davis all six five and three hundred and twenty pounds of him and a powerful man. Let's see what he has. If you're a Huskers fan, this is deja vu. As you see the center being helped off the field without even being able to put any weight on his leg. Polini lost last week. Looks like Reeves is now lost this week. So it'll be Paul Thurston taking over at center. And, you know, we talk, Matt, about when a quarterback gets hurt coming in cold off the bench, someone that handles the ball regularly, skill position guys. The offensive line is so anonymous at times. We don't even talk about when there's an injury, a cold offensive lineman coming in the yeah. game off the bench, much less the center that now has to handle the ball on every play. And not only handling, Bob, but more importantly, they are usually the communication center of the offensive line. And so they're the guys who have to make all the calls. If you can't see, you can't play as a center. And now you're down to your third guy, and you've got to be on the same page with communication or that that thing doesn't work in there. Well, keep an eye on Thurston and see if he is responsible for maybe communicating in the pit or do they shift that responsibility to one of the guards? Yeah, he's up and looking and he's calling. Second down and long. Again in the backfield, nowhere to go for Tommy Armstrong. And there's Carl Davis, the interior of that Iowa defensive line. That's their strength. Yeah, Carl Davis, yeah, he just came from the backside. They, they actually went away from him, and he took the inside move. And then once he gets a hand on you, here he is right here. 
See, the center went the other way. The guard went the other way. Carl Davis was left all alone. Third down and 15. High snap pulled down by Armstrong. Oh. He throws one over the middle, and boy, did Armstrong get hit. Well behind Westercamp, his intended receiver, and now Tommy Armstrong, who got waffled by Lewis Trinka-Passat, is very slow to get up. And so they run a stunt on the inside, is what they did between Trinka-Passat right here, Trinka-Passat, and Davis right here. And it's going to go this way. And so you have to be able to pass that off, and it's a, nice, it's a great pick by Carl Davis on Thurston and he just takes him out and gets a one-on-one -on -one with Trinka Passat to the other side and the net result is a helmet to the kisser. Foltz with a line drive kick fielded at the 41 yard line returnable and breaking tackles is Matt Vandenberg close to midfield. So it's great field position for Iowa with a field goal lead early in the third quarter and ESPN's rivalry series presented by Jiffy Loop continues tomorrow. ABC noon Eastern, the 111th meeting between Michigan and Ohio State, followed by Florida State looking to stay unbeaten. Number three taking on the Gators. It all begins tomorrow, noon on ABC, 3.30 on ESPN. How good of a year has JT Barrett had? And he's gotten better as the year's gone on. He's fun to watch. No gain on first down for Weissman. As we take a look at our playoff rankings. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Alabama and Auburn, of course, in the Iron Bowl tomorrow night at 7.45. The Egg Bowl of Mississippi State and Ole Miss, but how about the game TCU played? They just walloped Texas. Second half wasn't even close. They get to sit back now and watch what happens over the weekend. Play action, Rudolph. Wide open. It's the fullback, John Kenny. And he's got a first down into Nebraska territory. Just watching Rudock. It's different when you watch a guy live as opposed to tape. And the one thing I'm picking up here with Rudock is he sees the ball, but it doesn't come out as quick as it should. I mean, he sees the field, rather. But he doesn't. The ball should come out a little bit quicker and allow his receivers to do something with it after the catch. The guy's open. He just waits just a tad too long. Play action. Rudock has all day. They tuck it under and run and slide for only a yard. He was looking in zone for Cavante Martin Manley, but he was bracketed at the five yard line. So Jack Gangwish on the backside eventually brought him down. You got to be able to see the whole field, though, while you may have Martin Manley on one side. In the middle of the field, you got Smith all by himself. And was it a throw that he could have made? Yes. It was across the field, but you've got to see the whole field, something he normally does. seven-yard line before he's brought down and now a big play early in the third quarter Iowa by a field goal third down and about five they're not in field goal range yet you wouldn't think here at the 37 but what they did do is got to third and manageable so it's not third long anything third and five they feel good about that gives you all your intermediate throws in play and also you can still run it you can see the Hawkeyes better than 50-50 today on third down at five for eight. Here comes a blitz. Rudolph throws right behind the blitz. Into the open field is Tavon Smith. Touchdown. in the play just get the ball into Smith's hands and allow it but you have to pick up the blitz first which was well done little move to the inside and there's nobody out there it's man to man no help for even from the middle of the field Nate Gary missed the tackle 
And Rudock threw the ball out to Tavon Smith, right where the blitz came from. And now it is a 10-point Iowa lead. Seven yard catch and run for the touchdown. Third of the year for Tavon Smith. It's been a long time since I've been home. My kind of work keeps me on the road. If Tuesday morning finds me less than good, just tell my wife. Pictures here at Iowa. We call them Through My Lens, and it features up and coming professional photographers at the campus we visit each and every week. This week, here with the Hawkeyes, and Iowa now with a 10 point lead once again. Nebraska about to get the football back. Bob Schusen, Matt Millen, Quinn Kesnick here at Kinnick, and DeMorne Pearson L, the freshman, decides late to take a knee. Let's go back to the touchdown. Nate Gary's been having a great game, but this is what they're doing. They're man-to-man -man out here with the safety sitting over the top. They're going to bring this corner. This half the field belongs to Nate Gary, so you have to take a great angle. You have to come inside out, not outside in. He went outside in and gave him a two-way go. Tavon Smith just had to slip him to the inside, and there's no help behind you, and the net result is six points. How hard of a play is that for a safety to make? It's really tough, but that's why you have to be able to give him only one way to go, and, that, and then you can play to that way. Nebraska starts empty. Armstrong finds Westerkamp. Maybe three yards. Jewell made the tackle. And injury updates. Two commonplace. Quentin, you're down on the Nebraska sideline. It's been the story all year for the Huskers. Yeah, and it continues today. Ryan Reeves, center, done for the day with a right knee injury. Tommy Armstrong took a big shot in that last series. And you can just see his dislike of, of the pounding that he's taken because there's major leakage from the interior of this Nebraska line. Well, now you're down to your third string center. Armstrong, a quick hitter, and it's dropped. Sam Cotton had it, may have been able to fall backwards for a first down. Instead, here comes the crowd on third down and seven. And they know it, and they know they have an opportunity here. And so they're going to let, they're going to make the switch and let this defensive line get after them. Amir Abdullah, and that is good for a huge Nebraska first down. That's a nice job by Amir Abdullah. John Loudermilk does a very good job of coverage and gives him one way to go. He's right here sitting in the slot. Loudermilk has to take away the inside and then play to the outside, which is what he does to make the tackle. He does all those things right, but Amir Abdullah has enough to get the first. It's still early in the third quarter, but you can sense this game turning. If Nebraska went three and out there, that would have been disaster. Now they run the option. The late toss to a good one. And a good job to string the play out by that Iowa defense. You said it right. As long as Armstrong is running sideline to sideline, you're in great shape. And you want him to hold the ball and go this way because you're not gaining any ground. See Ott right there? That's really well played by Ott. Bowers in the outside gave nowhere for that ball to be pitched. Well played defense. Only a gain of a yard. Four man rush on second and nine. Armstrong, better protection. And a catch made about three yards shy of the first down. Quentin Alston tied up to Mornay Pearson L, the freshman. And they will mark him down at the 42-yard line. So third down and four coming now. Which now Armstrong's feet become part of the equation, and you have to account for them. You can still spread everybody out, but you better get somebody on his feet because he'll take it off. He'll take off and run, even right here. Look, there's nothing back here. You can do a quarterback draw here. Now they bring Quentin Austin down into the box. Showing blitz. 
Armstrong over the middle. It's tipped intended for Bell. It was Austin that was near the line of scrimmage and then sunk deep in pass coverage. And it's fourth down. And again, the Huskers have to kick it away. Yeah, Austin did a very good job of getting his eyes back inside on the quarterback and reading those eyes where he's going to take the ball. See Austin with his eyes back inside. He read him the whole time. They were anticipating man, which the quarterback generally will. Oh, it's fumbled. And unable to kick it away was Fultz. It caroms backwards. Inside the 15. Scooped up. That's going to be an Iowa touchdown. And it's Drew Ott that runs it in. tell you but because he dropped the ball couldn't handle it Ott is able to come up with another Iowa score last year a Nebraska failed fake punt in the third quarter was a huge play in the Iowa win now a disaster on punt again for Nebraska cost them a touchdown Behind every open heart is a story. And the Cree LED bulb, the biggest thing since the light bulb. There's a look at our crew and our thanks to the hard-working men and women that have made our college football season possible. Bob Wischusen, Matt Millen, Quinn Kesnick. Looks like Jason Rainey, one of our camera guys. Jim Martin, another camera guy who's out in the elements today. Not like the soft members of our crew that are all bundled up back in the truck with the heaters running. These are the real guys out there <laughs> braving the elements. But what a great night it was. And you could see what last night Matt Millen, the show that he put on at the Thanksgiving buffet back at the hotel. <laughs> hey. It really could only be described as grazing. I'm not Thank sure you. if there's any other word that Thank you very much. appropriately sums it up. Fumbling the kick and then picking it back up to Kenny Bell. And he's out of bounds close to the 30-yard line. Let's check our Aflac trivia question. Aflac. When is the last time all three finalists for the Doak Walker Award for the nation's premier running back were from the same conference, as is the case this year? The three finalists for the Doak Walker Award, Tevin Coleman from IU, Melvin Gordon, who has had an amazing year for Wisconsin, and Amir Abdullah, from Nebraska. So the top three running backs in contention for the Doak, all from the Big Ten. End around the morning personnel met after a gain of six by Jordan Lomax. And here are the three finalists. It's hard to imagine that Amir Abdul and Tevin Coleman have any chance to catch Melvin Gordon in the year that he's had. Now those, you know, those two guys have had, Amir Abdullah and Coleman have had outstanding years, but Melvin Gordon is special. That's going to be a high, high pick, and he will have a great pro career. Once again, it's Pearson out. Again, it's Lomax. But that should be good for a Nebraska first down, and this... You'd have to think, even with 23 minutes of football left to play, it feels like a must drive for the Huskers having given up the special teams touchdown. Yeah, they have, they've got to get points out of this. Even if it's three, they need seven, but they, they've got to get something. And here Abdullah finds a crease. Runs through a tackler. Amir Abdullah inside the 20. Stays on his feet down there's a star running back doing what he can to get his team back in the game did I mention his toughness if I didn't I was remiss this guy he's got all the things you need he's not a real big guy but watch his resolve he refuses to go down runs right through tackle after tackle that is just really well done Bo Bowers does a nice job of trailing him to, to get him to the ground now it's Amani Cross in a tailback 
Play clock down to 10. Tommy Armstrong maybe changing the play. He wants to throw for it. Into double coverage, and it's almost intercepted. Jordan Westerkamp was the intended receiver, and on the carom, John Loudermilk almost had his second pick of the game. Desmond King was there as well. Loudermilk 37 sitting in the back here. They're going to they're gonna try to get down here to the corner. This is wide open. That's where he needed to get to the ball. They dropped the coverage. Loudermilk took his guy deep, and the corner dropped his coverage to the throw it underneath here to walk in. Armstrong with a flag down to the two-yard line. Generally the area where there's holding. Holding, holding. offense number 59. 10-yard penalty, replay second down. That's Matt Finnan, who is now at right tackle in place of Given Price, who got the start because Zach Sterup is hurt. It's right up top here. Zach Finnan. They're going to try to stretch this thing. See how to take the wide lateral step? And he gets into the linebacker on Bauer. And that's the. I don't know about that call. Well, either way, it really hurts the Huskers. Yeah. Now it's second down and goal, but all the way back to the 18. Abdullah back in the game. Under pressure is Armstrong. Shovels one out on the edge to Newby, but it's incomplete. Now it's third down and goal from the 18. Yeah, and that third down is brought to you completely by Carl Davis. As Davis comes, breaks through, and puts the pressure on Armstrong, and he rushes himself to make that pitch. Watch Carl Davis on the backside. Nobody touches him. He just runs through. Armstrong feels him and knows he's in trouble and sets up this third down. They have to get points. So how much of a risk do you take on third down, or do you protect the field goal? Here, I'm not, I'm not bringing pressure. I'm sitting back. Iowa does bring pressure. Armstrong running away from the rush. He'll tuck it under. And go out of bounds at the 10. So it will be a field goal to try and make it a two-possession game for the Huskers. But that really hurts when you get inside the 10-yard line. And Abdullah on the 53-yard run gets gassed. You have to take him out of the game. And then you go backwards with a penalty as well. Yeah, the penalty is what killed him here. But well, the reason why I would not have brought pressure, I would have matched it up if you want to win a zone, is because of that right there. He can beat you with his feet. That's what you want to try to defend against. They were able to come out of it and set up this field goal. Drew Brown missed earlier from 49. This only from 27. And it's blocked again. It's unbelievable. Carl Davis blocked the kick. And they're, once again, the basket comes away empty. Did you see how long it took for the official to blow it dead? They were waiting for the, the guy to make a football move. That ball could have been advanced. It was not behind the line of scrimmage. Or it was behind the line of scrimmage, rather. And if it's behind the line of scrimmage, if you pick it up as an offense, you can still advance that. So I was watching the side judge, and he was standing there watching him. And then he finally, after a while... Blocked. Behind the line of scrimmage, yeah. all still alive. See? Picked up by Nebraska, but his forward progress is stopped. First down, Iowa. So he picks it up and he stands there with his thumb up his nose. <laughs> all you have to do is run forward. It's a first down. You could get the touchdown. So a missed chance for Nebraska as they could have advanced. What a play that now becomes dead. And the breaks continue to go Iowa's way. The Holiday Classic, A Charlie Brown Christmas, Tuesday, 8.30, 7.30 Central on ABC. It's Carl Davis. He's going to get the block. Then I want you to watch Janovich on the outside. Janovich there, and the 10-yard line is the key. Because if it goes beyond the 10, then it's dead. 
but it doesn't. It's behind the line of scrimmage. Janovich picks it up, not aware of the rule. Now watch this. They hold him right here. See them? Now they look to the sideline. There's a judge, side judge or line judge right there. He still stays on him, okay? And now they blow it. All these officials were waiting for a move to be done, but because the Iowa players were looking at like, are you going to stop this or not? They finally did stop it. It's well officiated, but that's poor by Janovich because he could have advanced the ball. And instead, Iowa takes over at their own 12-yard line with Ken Ziri. Stays in bounds, so that keeps the clock rolling. Sandwiched by Kevin Williams and Daniel Davey. And Quinn Kesnick down on that Nebraska sideline. Q? Well, actually, I was talking to the officials during that last time out. Bruce Keeling's our head linesman. Uh, he said they typically slow play a situation like that. In that case, they waited. Forward progress was stopped, so they blow their whistle. They gave him a chance. You're exactly right, Q. And the Iowa defender looked to him like, you want to do this or not? Because there's always that in between, like, if I slam the guy, do I get a flag? Weissman to the 15-yard line. Brings up third down and seven. And how many times today? Turnovers, mistakes on special teams, points either left on the field or touchdown scored. Now, the last touchdown by Iowa on the blocked field goal and the return for the score. So, I mean, Nebraska, so many miscues, times to look back at this game and realize how many opportunities they've missed. Still plenty of time left as they try to get a third down stop here. Rudolph looking at a four-man rush. Great protection, and there's Martin Manley. First down. Yeah. That's a well-conceived throw right there. I mean, uh, the play. Because they're going to clear things out, and then you take Martin Manley and just drag him underneath. Allow your guys to drop, the defenders to drop, and then you just run to green. The whole key then becomes, do you have protection? And this offensive line has given protection all day to Rudolph. Early, early they didn't have it. But since the first quarter, they've been pretty darn good. Ziri tries to cut back, and this time he is stopped right about at the line of scrimmage. Byerson Cockrell made the stop for Nebraska. Second down and long. So it appears that the last two weeks, they finally cured the edge problem here in the third quarter. And what they've done is they've turned everything over to Valentine on the inside along with Malik Collins. They're going to handle any inside runs, but you're loading up on the outside to take that edge and have it defended. coverage up the seam intended for the tight end Ray Hamilton maybe not the best decision by Jake Rudock third down that's a nice way to put it I however would say lousy decision he had something underneath dump it off underneath don't throw it into three defended uh, a, a receiver defended by three players normally you're a much lower percentage when you're going for third and long than for third and short the opposite true today for Iowa, third and seven plus, they're two for three, and they just got the last one. Now it's third down and ten. Nebraska brings a blitz. Rudolph, long throw to the sideline, no chance to find Jake Doozy. So the Nebraska defense does their job after the field goal block, and they force a punt. That's what the Nebraska defense has needed to do all day long, is get Iowa in third and long and and make Rudock have to try to beat you with throws down the field. First punt of the day for Iowa. And it's an ugly one from Dylan Kidd. Takes a Hawkeye bounce to about the 36-yard line. Time now to answer our Aflac trivia question. Aflac. When's the last time all three finalists for the Doak Walker Award were from the same conference? The award that goes to the nation's premier running back? It's a tricky one. Now it's a trick question. Never. And this is the first time in the 25-year history of the award that the top three finalists all from the same league, and they are all from the Big Ten this year. Amir Abdullah 
Had a 53-yard run to get Nebraska down inside the 10-yard line, but again they came away empty. Now they start at their own 36. Play action. Armstrong over the middle. And it looked as if DeMornay Pearson L may have been hit a little early by Jordan Lomax, but no flag comes out. You know, these two safeties for Iowa are pretty good. Lomax does a nice job, and Loudermilk is Loudermilk will be playing on Sunday, so he'll have a chance. Loudermilk and Lomax play well and, and play well together and off each other. Loudermilk, of course, is the son of Kirk Loudermilk, the old center for the Minnesota Vikings, and he has his dad's toughness. Abdullah cuts it back. He's got a first down and more. There goes Amir Abdullah again to the 37-yard line of Iowa. Choose at the next level. I don't see Amir Abdullah being a 25 to 30 carry a game guy But I see him as being a guy who you can use in the slot who catches the ball out of the backfield Who can rely on for 10 at least 10? Uh, carries a game plus screens. He's he's a terrific player now. It's a money cross To the 31 yard line a gain of nearly six and when they have gone to the ground game, they've had some success. You wonder, Amir Abdullah gets one big run, goes to the sideline. Now they go to Amani Cross. They got down inside the 10-yard line, all of a sudden started to throw the ball in the end zone. Yeah, sometimes that happens with offensive coordinators when they figure, well, they're not going to allow us to do this. They'll load up the box. So let me show you, you know, this passing game. Just stick with what works. Now it's the freshman, and he gets tripped up. Pearson L brought down by Mike Hardy. That's a loss of a couple. Now it's third down and a long seven, maybe eight. The Iowa defense in these situations have been able to get pressure with four. That's a great advantage. Armstrong rolls out. Will he run for it? Fine time. And stay he'll look to the end zone. He's got a man, and it's a touchdown. Tariq Allen got lost behind the Iowa coverage, and Nebraska's back in the game. That's all on Armstrong. Great job of buying time. They roll him out, use his feet, but his eyes stayed down the field. He had patience. He just takes his time. Look at his eyes. He knows that is that's really well done. Somebody dropped the coverage back there somewhere. It looked like Desmond King, the corner, was the closest to Tariq Allen when the ball finally got to the end zone. But Brown adds the point after, and now it's a 10-point game with 144 to go in the third. Let's see what they did. They're going to come. It looks like they brought five, which would indicate a blitz, generally man. Here's King down here on Bell. He just runs right through the middle. There's nobody there. It would have been Lomax, perhaps. Lomax may have dropped that coverage to the top side. King did his best to recover, but that obviously wasn't his man. But how about that? The number of times Nebraska has had a chance and getting down even into the red zone and not finding a way to score points, and now one blown coverage. Makes it a very interesting game with 144 to go in the third. Yeah, still a lot of time. A lot of time left in this game for Nebraska to be able to capitalize on what they, what, right here, of what they've done well now is Amir Abdul has had a couple of big runs, and then Armstrong has been able to buy some time and find plays down the field. Returnable kick from the one. Jonathan Parker tripped up just across the 20-yard line. And let's head back again and check in with John Saunders. All right, guys. Well, let's uh, go AT&T inside the headset. There hasn't been uh, as much pressure on the quarterback as the defensive coordinator would like, but they get it here. Mike White sacked and dragged into the end zone. He tries to get rid of the ball here. They could have called this a fumble almost, but they don't. They call it a safety as a result. 16 nothing. Bob and Matt. Well, oh, it's 24-14 here. John and Kinnick. And it's Weissman on first down. Brought down behind the line. 
Zaire Anderson, leading tackler for Nebraska, made the stop. Second down and long, and now the Huskers down by 10. But they've got some momentum. Zaire Anderson makes a tackle, but Vincent Valentine made the play. As he did a great job of getting on top of his his uh, the blocker and forcing things back underneath him. And then Anderson was able to clean it up. Just a little too far. That's a touchdown. If Damon Powell can run under that Jake Rudock bomb. Yeah, that's uh, that's on the quarterback. That is oh, that's a, that's a nice move. He got the defender on his heels. It's wide open. Just you can't overthrow him. It's easy to say when you're up here in the booth. So that's a dodged bullet for the Huskers. Now they force third down and 10. Again, the pass protection is there. Rudock again looking for a big play up the seam, but he can't hit Martin Manley. Jeez. And now it's going to be, after a three and out, a punt right back to the Huskers. That's exactly where you want him to get. Third and long, force Rudock to be accurate. I don't believe he is in long situations. We just saw two examples of that. Third, second, and third down. DeMorne Pearsonell, the true freshman from Virginia, number one in the Big Ten, number four in America. Returning kicks. Will he get a chance here? Fields it on the run at the 40. And does a good job to get the ball across the 50. So Nebraska down by 10, but they'll start this drive in Iowa territory. As we take a look at our good hands play brought to you by Allstate. And this was the really good reach back catch by Amir Abdullah for the first touchdown for Nebraska back in the first half. And it wasn't an easy catch because there was some mustard on that ball and he threw it behind him. But Abdullah, with great concentration and strong hands, makes the play. Number one all-time in Nebraska history in all-purpose yards. Number two in Big Ten history in all-purpose yards. Amir Abdullah. Armstrong with a fake. He's looking for Kenny Bell. The home run ball, and that was there. And making the same mistake that Jake Rudhock just made, Armstrong overthrows a wide-open receiver. Could have been a touchdown, and there's a flag down. Kenny Bell beat King to the middle of the field. Now it looks like they picked the flag up, so it's now second down and ten. Protection is there. Lomax jumps the underneath. King is beat by five yards. You can't miss that throw. Five-man rush. Armstrong gets out of the pocket again. Unable to stretch it to Westerkamp, and now it's third down and ten. Yeah, the difference between these offenses is right here on third down. Third and long, Armstrong can make a play. And he can beat you also with his feet if he has to, and you can stretch the play with Armstrong's feet because he still keeps his eyes down the field. On top of that, he's got a big arm. Their greatest third down success as well has come on third down and long. The opposite of what you'd expect. They've had pressure, they've had success bringing pressure on third down. Looks like they're coming again. Here comes a blitz. Wide open, flag down. Kenny Bell comes back to help his quarterback, but it's incomplete. He was unable to hold on. We'll have to check the penalty marker. Personal foul, hands in the face. Offense number 55. Penalties declined, fourth down. That's the third string center for Nebraska. Paul Thurston, who was on in place of Ryan Reeves, who went out with a right leg injury. Of course, Reeves was replacing Mark Pellini, the nephew of Bo Pellini, who hurt his ankle last week against Minnesota. 
So Nebraska playing with their third string center, their second string right tackle. And they miss a chance here going three and out starting in plus territory. Sam Foltz trying to pin the Hawkeyes deep. And he can't do it. Into the end zone for a touchback. Coming Sunday, January 4th on ABC at 8, 7 central. A four-week comedy extravaganza featuring guest stars John Stamos, Rutger Hauer, and Ricky Gervais. This is one you cannot miss. Gallivant, starting Sunday, January 4th on ABC. So all in all, the Huskers only gain 28 yards of field position. You start at the plus 48, and you go three and out and punt it in the end zone. Yeah, not a good show. And it's back on their defense again. Weissman on a carry that should end the third quarter out to about the 25-yard line. So we head to the fourth in the Hy-Vee Heroes game. The matchup between Nebraska and Iowa with the Hawkeyes on top by 10. And we'll return to Iowa City in just a moment. College football presented by Kay Jewelers continues after these messages. And a word from our local ABC stations. You're watching ESPN on ABC. City. Bob Wischusen, Matt Millen, Quinn Kesnick, and what has been a very interesting and at times mistake filled game. Iowa has the ball and a 10 point lead. Nebraska with some momentum, though, their defense has played well. They'll run it to the edge with Kanziri, and he is swapped by Vincent Valentine. Nowhere to go. There were five Husker white jerseys out there shutting down Kanziri. Two guys who have played extremely well here today. Valentine has done a very good job on the inside. Malik Collins also. And then if you want to add Gary, save one missed tackle. They, those three have played really well. Based on how this team has gone, the question is which is going to make the big mistake in the fourth quarter? Third down and seven. You mean another mistake? Rudock with a pump fake. Finds Martin Manley, but well short of the first down. Blanketed by Kalu. So it's three downs and out once again for Iowa, and they'll have to punt. And Nebraska should get excellent field position. Iowa's turned it over four times. Twice in the red zone. Nebraska's turned it over twice. They missed a field goal. They had a field goal blocked that they could have advanced and did not. A blocked punt returned for an Iowa touchdown. So both teams have loaded up on the mistakes. A better kick this time for Dylan Kidd driving the Mornay personnel all the way back to his 25, but he gets loose. Here's Sunnell to midfield. Couldn't make the punter miss. Dylan Kidd saved the touchdown. What a huge return by the true freshman, DeMornay Pearsonell of 42 yards. Shades of Johnny Rogers. Takes you back to the Heisman Trophy winner. This is exactly what he looked like. The difference was Rogers would have beat the kicker. Nebraska is down by 10. Great field position, but Matt, they have hurt themselves mightily, especially on special teams. The folks couldn't handle it. It gets blocked, and then, of course, return for a touchdown by Ott. And then, not to be outdone, a blocked field goal ends that drive. And then, Kirk Ferentz, while happy, there was a missed opportunity there. Janovich, when he sees the ball laying behind the line of scrimmage, doesn't understand the rule and doesn't advance it. But a big punt return a moment ago. Play action for Tommy Armstrong. He wants to take a shot. Looking for Kenny Bell. He's got it in the back of the end zone. What a catch. Kenny Bell. Touchdown. Huskers. That was awesome. What a great throw. And Kenny Bell just goes up and high points it. And by that I mean as high as he can get when all defenders are around. This is as good as it gets. Ball in the air, watch him go up and get it around everybody. That is great. Great job by Kenny Bell. Kenny Bell was a game time decision with a head injury. 
How happy are the Huskers that he was able to work through it, get back on the field? Number one all time at Nebraska in receptions, yards, and third in touchdowns. That's his 19th receiving touchdown of his career. And it's a field goal game with 13.24 to go. Hard to imagine this Sports Center top 10 nominee won't make it on the show tonight. That's a great catch. The coverage was there. But the presence of Bell is the difference. Loudermilk can't quite get there. And you have Mabin, the corner. He's right there, right where he has to be. Now, eyes go. It was perfect. When Bell looked, he looked. The difference was Bell came back to the ball. Mabin ran past it. And Loudermilk couldn't quite get there. The net result is six points. So in spite of the fact that the Huskers have had plenty of miscues, they've also made big plays. Bell with a 32-yard touchdown reception. The other touchdown catch that went to Tariq Allen traveled 34 yards. And Armstrong now has only thrown for 132 total yards, but three of them for touchdowns. Here's Jonathan Parker. Out close to the 30-yard line. Saturday night on ESPN, college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. It's the Iron Bowl at 7.45 this year in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Auburn. That game also live tomorrow night on Watch ESPN. So, Shoes, right now, if you're the Nebraska defense, they've solved the problem of defending the edge. They've done that well. They've turned over the inside running game to the two defensive tackles, Collins and Valentine. They are putting this game on the shoulders of Rudock. That's what they've done. And Rudock to throw. Over the middle, incomplete. The pocket started to collapse as he tried to check it down to Mark Weissman. And Rudock ended up underneath Vincent Valentine. Valentine right there in the middle. Yeah, they are, they're betting, they're saying, okay, Rudock, you beat us, but we don't think you can. Here comes a blitz off the edge on second down. Rudock, they're trying to do a Tommy Armstrong. Quarterback draw for 13 yards. Well, that's not something Nebraska was expecting. And that's why it was such a great call by Greg Davis, their offensive coordinator. They're like, go ahead, Rudock, you go ahead. Hey, hold, hold on a second, you are running. And then he does a nice job at the end of this play to pick up the first down. They need to pull a little momentum back to their side. They're not going to get it on the edge anymore with Kanzeri. If anything, in the run game, they're going to have to run back inside with Weissman. Action again. Wide open. Oh, he missed him. And instead he looks for the fullback, John Kenny. And the whole crowd knows it. The entire building reacting as Jake Rudock had Kevante Martin Manley. Martin Manley was so wide open. It was, watch this, right to the middle of the field. And that's what the crowd was booing about. They dropped the coverage. Nothing there. Instead, he goes back underneath and sets up this second down. How does a quarterback bounce back from that one? When not only you missed it, but 70,000 realize you missed it as well. <laughs> they they, they kind of noticed that. By action again, Rudock on a rollout. Shovels one, and unable to hold on is Jake Doozy. And now it's third down and ten. Shoes that one, I don't get it all. I don't understand what the play call was about. They had the sideline. They're going to try to come with a comeback. That's the only thing they could do. And then Doozy underneath. There's no one in the middle of the field. It's not only that it's good coverage. And this is good coverage on the outside with Smith. The only thing he can do is run a comeback, which clearly is not there. Then the underneath coverage, there was nobody there. I don't know what they want to throw, Rudolph to throw it to. Is where they've had success putting Rudock in this third and long situation. And they bring a blitz. Rudock under pressure. The pocket collapses. Somehow he gets it away, but it's incomplete. 
They're feeling it on that yes, Nebraska sideline right now. Yep, good call by you, Shoes. You can see it. They, the players know it. There's, there were opportunities. Rudock missed it. This one he gets out of. But there's no answer for this pass game. Nebraska's taking it, and they're feeling it. High snap. Spiraling kick. Pearson L had a big punt return a moment ago to change the game. He might have another one here. Demone, Pearson L. This time he beats the kicker and one more. The Huskers have the lead. Not only does the sideline have confidence in Pearsonell, but Pearsonell has confidence in Pearsonell. Because as that ball was up there, it was closing quick. He didn't hesitate at all. He knew exactly that he was going to take it and give himself that chance. His third punt return touchdown this season. He came into today fourth in the country in punt return average. And he has given the Huskers the lead. So Nebraska comes from 17 down to take the lead. Out of the Hawkeyes respond. Still 12 minutes to go and what has been a wild game. It's the High V Heroes game. That's the trophy they play for. And it right now rests on the Iowa sideline. But from 17 down, Nebraska has now retaken the lead. As they look to avenge last year's loss in Lincoln. And DeMornay Pearsonell, the true freshman from Alexandria, Virginia, third punt return touchdown of the season, has given the Huskers the lead. This kickoff oh, bounces at the six yard line. Jonathan Parker, he'll get bottled up there. He catches that on the dead run. Who knows what might happen? Instead, he let it bounce as we go back to John Saunders. Bob, time for the Dr. Pepper Conference update, and Arkansas trying to derail Missouri's hopes of getting to the SEC championship for the second straight year. Brandon Allen tossed to Jonathan Williams, and he does most of the work getting it into the end zone. 7-0 lead, Arkansas. Meanwhile, Stanford awaits UCLA. Well, they be headed to the Pac-12 championship game. That's all coming up. Bob and Matt. All right, John, thanks very much. At the 15-yard line, it's Jake Rudock out of the shotgun. And he misses Doozy. And the crowd growing impatient with the junior quarterback, Jake Rudock. Yeah, uh, I would I'd put the game completely on him. Load up in the run box, and I'm from Nebraska. I'm saying this guy can't beat us. Prove me wrong. And so far, they've been right. Second down 10. Four-man rush, better throw by Rudock, and that time he's able to find Martin Manley to the 23-yard line, about two yards shy of the first down, so brings up a very important third and short. See if they don't go play action here. Two guys to keep your eyes on, Doozy, 87, Martin Manley, 11. Other than that, it's this man right here, and that is Mark Weissman for the power. Try and run for it with Weissman, and he, with second effort, may have reached the ball to the line to gain. He was hit behind the line. Zaire Anderson seemed to get him around the ankles, but not before it looks like Weissman got the ball to the 25. It is an Iowa first down. Yeah, Malik Collins did a nice job in there, and Zaire Anderson came over the top, and it's just power. That's a really good job by Collins, taking that, splitting that double. But look at the second effort, and there's the difference in the play. Rudock underneath to Kanziri. A gain of six, maybe seven. David Santos brought him down. Second and short. 
Nice job of protection from this offensive line. You haven't heard anything off the left side because Brandon Scherf has been blocking out that whole left side, whether it's in the run game or in the pass game. He's been consistent all game long. The senior left tackle, 68 for Iowa, number six on Mel Kuyper's big board. And Ziri shakes and bakes, close to another first down. It looks like he's got it. Yeah, whenever they've had that that yardage where it's like the third, uh, you know, second and three or something like that, they run behind Scherf. Scherf will be a number one pick. I don't know, you know, he's not a prototypical left tackle. He doesn't have real long arms. Me, personally, I, look, I think he looks like a guard at the next level, and I think he'd be an all-pro guard. But he can play tackle as well. Rudolph, this time he goes down, back to the 25-yard line. Vincent Valentine with his third sack this season. Looked like he beat Blythe 63. Valentine and Collins to here, here he is right here. And here's Blythe 63 and Gall 57 the center. And it's just a power move. Oh, he just he just overpowered him. Headbutt, you see the nice headbutt? Nice headbutt, got him on his heels and then worked to the inside shoulder. That is well done. back some of the sack yardage to Tavon Smith, but now it's third down at 12. And this is exactly where Nebraska wants this offense. And now, you know, you don't even, you don't, you can play off a little bit, off coverage. You can even bring a fifth guy for pressure. Third and closer to 13. They'll bring four and zone it. Only a four-man rush. That's what they do. Rudolph has all day. Fires a bullet. Incomplete. Oh, what he's looking at. Matt Vandenberg was the intended receiver. And let's take a look now at our trusted target brought to you by Jiffy Lube. And that is the freshman, DeMornay Pearson L. Well, I would have to think Dylan Kidd wants to do whatever he can to keep the ball away from that guy. Yeah, if you even kick it in the field of play, you need a kick. <laughs> uh, Might be returnable. No, up against the sideline. That's a great kick. kick. Good kick. Inside the 15, and it goes out of bounds at the 12. Nebraska has the football, and they've got the lead. The polar vortex. Snow Megiddo. Snow catastrophe. We're running out of names tonight. We ask the question, is winter out to get us? Then we probably answer it. The effects of the cold are well documented. Just look back at history. Ancient man went extinct during the Ice Age. First, the brain stops functioning properly. Next, the extremities lose all feeling and start to spasm. Your limbs may freeze and fall off. We're gathered back in Iowa City, and it's time to take a look at our Pacific Life game summary and how Nebraska has come from 24 7 down to retake the lead. Yeah, if you go from the bottom up, you see the 21 unanswered points. Turnovers from Iowa have been a big one. You see the seven points, but now with Amir Abdullah at 99 yards rushing, we should see the Amir Abdullah running show. Put it in his hands and trust that he gets it done with his offensive line. Good on first down for a yard. Several times, Matt, in this game, we have seen Nebraska's defense do what Iowa's defense has a chance to do right now. Right. And that is get a stop deep, flip field position in a close game. The Nebraska defense done a great job of it. Can the Iowa defense do it again here? And in addition to doing that, it's pulling a little bit of momentum back to their side because clearly they've lost it. Again, no gain on second down. Quentin Alston, Carl Davis combined on the stop. Now it's third down and at least nine. So what you have to defend 
is the quarterback's feet. They have been the difference in the second half. Yes, he made some throws, but he made those throws because he was able to extend the play with his feet. So you have to make a decision on whether or not you're going to bring pressure. And if you do, with this field spread this way, you've got to be careful he doesn't quarterback draw, take off and run on you. No down lineman trying to disguise the look. It's only a three-man rush. Quarterback draw. There it is. Flag down. Armstrong got to the 20-yard line, two yards shy of the first. Quinton Alston had a very strong three-down three series right there. In on all three tackles, including that third down, which was short, but a flag. Kirk Ferentz already saying decline the penalty. It'll be fourth and two. Holding. Holding. Offense, number 55. Penalties declined. Brings up fourth down. So they do exactly what you said, Shoes, that they needed to do. Thurston got a call for the hold. They're going to just rush. Now, they don't really care. They're waiting for him to take off and run. There's the hold right there. But Alston does a good job of running him down, preventing the first, and forcing this fourth down. spins down still terrific field position for Iowa exactly what they needed they've got it at their own 47 when we come back they're at the game 28 24 Nebraska has the lead Bob was alongside Matt Millen Quint Kesnick down on the field and exactly what Iowa needed to have their defense do for them get a stop flip the field and here's a terrific opportunity a drive starting at their own 47. This one's on Jake Rudon. He's got to play. He's been not very good here in the second half, just 7 to 17. Kanziri on first down. Gets to the edge, but only picks up about two yards. Josh Kalou was there to make the tackle after a gain of two and a half. Kalou's played really well here in the second half. And the adjustment that whatever was made in the second half, defending the edge has worked well for Nebraska. Basically what it is, is I think it's just they're fitting properly. Better throw by Ruda. Jake Doozy, the tight end, with a first down. That's a nice route by Doozy. And it's just leverage is all it is. He knows he has a defender on his inside, so you're breaking out. And just by turning to the outside, you're going to be open. You can see Doozy on the top side. All you're doing is just turning to the outside, and the ball's got to be there. Five-man rush. Rudolph steps up in the pocket, and that was intended for Doozy, who stumbled with Byers and Cockrell just behind. Good protection, however. He coming back to the ball. What I would say, one thing that you see out of Rudock is he holds onto the ball just a little too long. Just a touch. The ball comes out quicker. This is a more efficient offense. Quarterback draw. Rudock tripped up. Maybe a loss. Jack Ganglish made the tackle for loss. That's his fourth of the season. And now it's third down and 11. And this is where you want him to be. And now advantage Nebraska defensively. You can rush with four. You can match on the backside. You can play zone over the top. Go ahead and run it if you want it for your quarterback. Down by four. Would this be four down territory if they get half of it? At five minute mark, you might trust your defense one more time. Rudock throws one right to the first down marker. Tavon Smith made the catch. Short. And it's fourth and one. That, however, is a big time throw. And he had, he did a nice job of being patient in the pocket. And he delivered it right where it had to be. Let's see the decision. You have to go for it. Now you have to. With 5.15 to go, down by four. You need a touchdown or two field goals 
to take the lead. And it looks like they will go for it on fourth and one, but now a timeout being called. The ruling on the field was the runner was short of the line to gain. The previous play is under further review. And this is a good review. Yeah. You want to make sure, because this is a game-changing decision, if Iowa were to go for it and come up short, you want to take a look and make sure that the ball is exactly in the right place. Tavon Smith just about got to the first down marker. They have him down about a half yard shy of the first down. Yeah, I think it's going to be closer than a half yard. His knee, it's where the ball is when his knee touches. And so he turns up field and the ball is forward of his knees. It's about even with the knee, so that's probably that's probably about the right spot. They needed to get to the 26-yard line for a first down, and they literally have the ball marked halfway between the 27 and the 26. Here's the ruling. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Short of the line again, fourth down. It looked like a good spot at first, yeah. and now replay backs it up. Well, and keep in mind that that yellow line on the, your television screen is not the official mark. Right. Well, that's it's close. But now, okay, let's see what we got. Are you going to trust? You're going to trust your power game and your offensive line and run behind Surf on the left side, or are you going to roll the dice a little bit? Weissman, he's got the first down and more. Almost went the distance. The high hurdle job to the 19-yard line. And no team this year has more fourth down conversions in the Big Ten than Iowa. I, I do like the call, however, with Weissman. They trust him, and they trust that they're going to get a good push off the line of scrimmage, and they do. And not only do they not go behind Scherf, they go to the other side behind Donnell, and they come through. Pretty good success rate for Mark Weissman on fourth down. Gets the carry again. This time driven back. Back to the 20-yard line where it will be second down and long. Greg McMullen blew that play up for Nebraska. McMullen's played well. He's redeemed himself here. The last two weeks, he struggled on that edge. Not so this week. When you have Weissman, anytime you have him running sideways, you win. You don't want him to square his shoulders and come downhill. Ten. Yeah, that, that's when he's good. See how his shoulders are squared to the line of scrimmage, and he's moving forward. That's when he's most effective. When you get him with his shoulders going sideways, not effective. So the one step and lateral, and then come straight, that's called downhill, straight at you. That's what he does well. Third down and one. That's a first down. So it's first and goal, Iowa. 3.05 to go. And at some point during this exchange now, depending on how many plays, Iowa runs inside the 10. Bo Pelini might have to start thinking about using his timeouts. Yeah, you're under the three-minute mark. And they're going to, they're not going to put, me, if I'm Iowa, I'm not going to put the ball into the hands of the quarterback to win it. I'm going to use, trust my power and let Weissman bloody some noises. Noses. There he goes again to the five-yard line. And the clock winds down. This will take us inside of two and a half minutes to go. Unless at some point Bo Pelini decides to use a timeout. If Iowa punches it in, how much time will Nebraska have on the clock? And so you're thinking here, Shoes, this is four downs. You're using all four downs if you need them. So if you're going to waste it down, not waste it down, but take a chance on the down, it's right here with play action. I'd play action to Doozy into the end zone. Weissman again. Nothing doing. Don't like that when he's going sideways. I wouldn't even make that an option. I'd get him downhill as fast as possible. Zaire Anderson does a nice job of coming inside out on that read. 
and sets up this third down. And now Bo Pelini will use a timeout. Yeah, see, to see how his, he's running sideways. You don't want a sideways Weissman. You want a downhill Weissman. He's a powerful guy, and when his shoulders are square, coming straight towards the line of scrimmage, that's when he's most effective. And what's interesting here with Bo Pelini, as we said, you think about using timeouts here to preserve time for your offense if you need them. But if you use your timeouts here if you're Nebraska and you get a stop, you're preserving time on the other end for Iowa to maybe use their timeouts, force you to punt and get the ball back. It's really interesting the way the two coaches have to think about using their timeouts here because it could conceivably backfire on you if you're the Huskers, if you stop the clock, but then your defense gets a stop inside the five. And the best thing to do right here if you're Nebraska is just stop them and get it over with, right? Yeah, and just, you've got to be able, this is a huge down, obviously, third down, it's third and five. Quickly, let's go down to Quinn. A breath of fresh air for the defensive line and Bo Pelini talking to the secondary if Iowa comes out in a three-man bunch. Well, instead, they come out with two receivers bunched to the left. Devante Martin Manley on the back side of the stack receivers. Rudolph to throw. Swings it to Kanziri. He's into the end zone. That's a touchdown for Iowa. And the Huskers are now down once again. They're going to run this off, and Kanziri gets outside. There should be somebody coming from inside out, but it doesn't show. Yeah, there needs to be a backer or a safety on Kanziri, because there's no way they're just going to peel that in coverage. Now a field goal separates these two teams with 1.49 to go. And now the timeout by Bo Pelini does work out to his advantage because he did save some time for his offense. And let me say this also. Jake Rudock had to come through on that series, and he did. So credit Rudock for what he's doing. They said, go ahead and beat us, and he found a way to get it done. Well, this whole stadium was kind of coming down on the top of Jake Rudock when he missed Martin Manley on what was a wide-open touchdown a couple of possessions ago. But Rudock able to engineer a touchdown drive. And now Nebraska with two timeouts left. They need a field goal to tie the game. Or maybe a touchdown to win it. And this kick right here is a big deal because Nebraska has been very good in the return game today. And so if he can, he needs to drive this thing through the end zone. Marshall Kane, number one in the Big Ten and number three in the country in touchback percentage. This one, not a touchback, though. It's Kenny Bell from inside the five. Pays the price at about the 28-yard line. Hopefully tomorrow, is as good as the game we've got here as ESPN's rivalry series presented by Jiffy Lube continues. Noon Eastern, Michigan, Ohio State. Then over on ESPN at 3.30 Eastern. Number three, Florida State taking on Florida. Those games available on Watch ESPN tomorrow as well. Four-man rush, under pressure, off his back foot, incomplete. Tried to check down to Amir Abdullah. Second down and ten. That's on Carl Davis. Carl Davis brought the heat. Armstrong felt it, forced the bad throw. Davis has played himself a big game here today. They're going with a four-man rush. Keeping both safeties deep. Armstrong threw it before Bell came out of his break, but the flag is thrown. I'm not sure about that one. This is going to go against Iowa. I don't think Kinnick, as a group here collectively, is sure about that one either. <laughs>
Pass interference. Defense. Spot ball. Automatic first down. That's Greg Maben, sophomore corner. Uh, yeah, there was there was contact, but there was contact from both sides. And Kenny Bell threw Maben by. Maben did have his hand on him. But hey, there's the call. You got to play. Big first down for the Huskers. Four-man rush. Armstrong avoids the rush. Throws it down the sideline. Intended for Bell or Pearsonell. They were both in the area. And it sails in between incomplete. Armstrong can buy some time with his feet back there, and he has. But you have to have a plan once he breaks the pocket. Meyer had his chance at getting the sack, but down the field, you had two guys at the same spot, and that shouldn't be. Plenty of time for Nebraska still to get the field goal range with two timeouts. Here comes a blitz. Wide open over the middle. The catch is made by Stephen Carter, the tight end. Great job by Tommy Armstrong off his back foot in the face of the blitz. And he felt that the whole time. I don't particularly like the call right there. You're getting four guys. With four guys, you're getting pressure. You don't have to bring anything else. You make him have to be ultra ac uh, accurate. Armstrong looking down the sideline. It's a jump ball. Making the adjustment and the catch inside the 15. Brandon Riley, wonderful job to adjust to the ball. And now Nebraska's thinking touchdown. As they should. First and 10 for Nebraska at the Iowa 12. Maven, look, the cardinal sin of his own defense is don't get beat deep. Maven, you give stuff up in front of you, not behind you. Timeout called by Charge Iowa. Timeout. Iowa, they're first. So now Kirk Ferentz thinking the same thing that Bo Pelini was thinking. I might need some time for my offense. While we have an opportunity, let's go back to John Saunders. Well, guys, you'll be interested to note the NFL Players Association said today that former Ravens running back Ray Rice has won his appeal of his indefinite suspension. The ruling means Rice is reinstated to the NFL and eligible to sign with a team. Right now, Ray Rice does not have a team. The Ravens released him first before the NFL, of course, shut him down. But that has been overturned. All right, John, thanks very much. Well, that very interesting news. That's really step one. Step two, a much bigger step, Matt. What team would be willing to take on maybe the PR nightmare of signing Ray Rice? We'll see if that plays out before the end of the season. Now what plays out in the last 58 seconds here at Kent Stadium? Now if you're going to have some pressure, now's the time. You've got a short field, and they're a lot easier covered. But keep your eyes on, on Amir Abdullah. Quarterback draw. Armstrong. Inside the 10, down to the 7-yard line. Does Iowa think about spending another time out? Well done by Alston. All that matters here, if you're going to, if you're going to have points, it has to be three. It can't be six for Iowa. Now Iowa will let the clock wind down. Second and five. Amir Abdullah right up the middle. Just short, it looks like, of the first down. Brought down by Jordan Lomax. They can pick up a first down inside the two-yard line. They're going to take a timeout. So that will be the second timeout called by time Nebraska. Out. Nebraska, they're second. This will be a 30-second timeout. So now for Iowa, this is it. So you're down here. It's, what, third down. You've got to stop them on this third down, and you have a couple problems. One is Amir Abdullah getting to the edge. I don't believe inside. Two is Armstrong's feet on the edge, being able to extend the play. And then you have to be able to hold coverage. What I would do is I would go with a tight man coverage, and this is the time to run your blitz. It's going to handle all your run gaps, and it's also going to account for any kind of... You have to put somebody on that quarterback. You have to be able to account for him. Third down and less than one. 
Nebraska gets it inside the two-yard line. They can pick up a first down. Look at the depth of this scarf. See if he doesn't pull around. And now a timeout called by Iowa before the snap. Charge timeout, Iowa. They're second. This will be a 30-second timeout. So now both teams down to only one timeout left. 20 seconds to go. Bob Wischusen, Matt Millen, Quinn Kesnick. This has been one fun football game. And now you start to think about if Nebraska doesn't score a touchdown, but they just pick up the first down. The clock stops. They still have a timeout left. Do you run up? Do you spike it? Do you run a play as soon as they set the ball ready for play? What do you do maybe to preserve that timeout? So if you're inside the two-yard line, you still have the full playbook at your disposal. Yeah, so let's say this is going to take maybe five seconds. You're down to 15 seconds. I use my last timeout. Okay. I make my choice. And then from there, it's a tough choice. If you do go for it, you can throw it. That would stop the clock or it's a touchdown. And then you have the opportunity for one more play and kick it if you have to. Now they line up in the pistol. Abdullah is the tailback on third down and one. He takes the handoff. The pile moves. Where do they spot the football? Short. He's short. And if he's short, it's no decision for Bo Pelini. You let the clock wind down, you call your timeout, you try and tie the game. Yeah, it looks like he took the timeout with 12 seconds, and they'll kick it. And that's a great job of Iowa's defensive front of coming through when they had to. It was going to be Amir Abdullah to the inside, and big Carl Davis on the inside along with... Uh, Along with his friends did a great job. <laughs> there were so many of them, I didn't know who to pick. He and his buddies. <laughs> well, it's the interior of that defensive line that the Hawkeyes have leaned on all season. Yeah, That's he, their strength. Here's the key. See, he had to get double. Carl Davis handled not one, but two. Beat the first one, then Thurston had to come and get to him. And because Thurston did, that allowed the pressure off the backside to be able to come through and Drew Ott eventually got into it. Now, in case you're wondering, this is really nothing more than an extra point, but will it be a gimme for Nebraska? Well, they've had a long field goal missed and a field goal blocked in this game. So, again, the ball spotted at the three-yard line, so this is, for Drew Brown, nothing but an extra point in terms of distance. But a lot more riding on this kick than your average extra point. 20 yards away to try and tie the game. And he's got it right down the middle. Time, This game, Matt, has been full of miscues, but there's something to be said about football teams that keep on overcoming their own miscues, making plays, and this is a game that you build a rivalry on. The thing that you love about games like this is the ability of the team to forget what just happened and move forward. Right. So, yeah, we made a lot of mistakes today, and I missed tackles, and we we had mis we had block kicks, and we had fumbles, and we had inter we had everything that you had that loses games, but here we are with eight seconds left. Do you know what matters? Going forward, not thinking about what happened behind you. Tell you what, that Carl Davis played himself a pretty good football game here today. Well, both defenses, if you think about the mistakes on special teams and the turnovers, yep. both defenses dealt with sudden change today very, very well. There are a lot of stops at moments in the game where after a turnover, one or the other, certainly Iowa, had a chance a couple times to put the game away, and the Nebraska defense got some big stops. Even on this last drive, Nebraska has them on the ropes, and they have to stop them inside the 10-yard line, and they come up with a big third down. And now we got a tie game. Squib kick. And running it forward all the way out to about the 48-yard line is Chad Gilson. Three seconds to go. Well, this is at least in a position for Iowa based on the return by Gilson, one of the up protectors, that maybe if Rudock leans into a throw, he can 
throw it the distance before overtime. Now, if your kicker, if you had a really strong legged kicker, wow, right here, that'd be a really strong leg kicker. It would be a strong leg. It would be <laughs> 67 yards. Boy, from here it would be almost 70 yeah, yards. Yeah, it would be 70 yards. Yeah, Rudock's going to go First out there. And for the Hawkeyes, and most likely just try and hoist one as far as he can. So what should be the final play of regulation. And a timeout called by Iowa. They will spend their last timeout here. Charge timeout, Iowa. The third and final timeout. This will be a 30-second timeout. For Nebraska, other than the Hail Mary working, the only nightmare scenario here is you commit a penalty. Because yeah. the game can't end on a defensive penalty. Don't give them that chance. And we are tied at 31, barring a miracle. Looks like we're headed to overtime. And when you've got a budding rivalry, and in the Big Ten, with this being the traditional now, day after Thanksgiving game, for Nebraska, forever they played Oklahoma. Then in Big 12 days, many years in a row they played against Colorado. Now they've got this rivalry that's scheduled to continue this year and through the next three against Iowa. for the Hawkeyes. Devontae Martin Manley at six foot. Get the men to the right. Instead, it's over the middle, and they'll run a little hook and ladder. Devontae Martin Manley takes it from Tavon Smith. Another hook and lateral. And that's safe down the south line. He tries to throw it back inbounds to Weissman, but they say he stepped out of bounds. The left tackle ends up being the final ball carrier of regulation. As it should be. <laughs> Scherf's mad. He thought he had a chance to high step into the end zone. I think he thought he might have tossed the ball back inbounds before stepping out. Well, that's the end of regulation here in Iowa City. It ended appropriately for the type of game we've had. We'll return in just a moment. College football presented by Kay Jewelers will continue. After these messages and a word from our local ABC stations, you're watching ESPN on ABC. Back in the studio, as we head to overtime, we want to remind you that Stanford and UCLA is starting on ESPN News. Big news in that game, of course, UCLA a win, and they head to the Pac-12 championship game to face Oregon when we're done with overtime. Bob and Matt, back to you. Well, John, overtime about to begin as Nebraska won the overtime coin toss while we were away, and they deferred, so they will put Iowa's offense on the field first. 31 all and give the Huskers a lot of credit. They were down 24-7, came back to take the lead, but then Iowa answered, and again, a review of the rules in overtime. Each team gets one possession from the opponent's 25-yard line per overtime until the winner's declared. And it always seems like the strategy is if you win the toss, put your defense out there first, that's what the Huskers did. Absolutely, that's the right way to go. And so it goes back to what we just said at the end of the fourth quarter. It comes back to Rudolph. Now, it's a little bit different. This opens up your run game a little bit more. And it's, if it's Weissman, which it is, you've got to get him going with his shoulders squared to the line of scrimmage. Flag down. And a false start on the first play. Looks like Hamilton jumped number 82. False start. Offense number 82. Five-yard penalty remains first down.
diving down to the 21-yard line. He got the penalty yardage back plus four more. So first and 15 now becomes second and six. That's a big running play for Iowa. That's that's a big difference. Yeah, now you're in second and manageable. And you can get to third and manageable. That was very good point of patience running by Weissman. Again, it's Weissman. This time grabbed around the shoulder pads by Zaire Anderson. So it brings up a big third down on this opening possession of overtime just inside the 20 yard line. Bob Wischusen, Matt Millen, Quint Kesnick here in Iowa City. Extra football between the Huskers and Hawks. And who knows how this game might end with all the different momentum swings and miscues we've had. Do you bring pressure here if you're Nebraska expecting a Rudock throw? Uh, I would. They have it. They rush four. Rudock protected, finds Doozy. Flag down in the secondary. If the play stands, it's a first down to the 12-yard line. This is going to go against Nebraska. Looked like there was a hold on, on Doozy. Defense number 10. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. I think the only discussion there amongst the officials was did the play travel longer than maybe the half the distance is. to the goal penalty would? And looks like they did the math and figured out that the penalty was more beneficial to Iowa than the play. So it's first and goal. Puts the ball inside the 10 yard line. And so now we go back to how do you handle Weissman as a runner? And then do you still try to put it back on your quarterback? And so you're Greg Davis and you're the offensive coordinator for Iowa. It looks like the answer is going to be, you know what, we're going to bloody your nose. We're going to pound the football. That's what we do. And you'll know what you'll do is you'll run away from numbers. And if you're doing that right now, you're going to run to the top right. Play action. Rudolph floats it into the end zone. Off the fingertips of Ray Hamilton. And incomplete. I like taking your shot right there. That was the right time to do it. Now, when you say that, are you expecting that this is the only shot that they'll take? Now you run it, or maybe play for the field goal? Now he'll get. He's got. It, he'll. He'll get something here that he wants to try to get. Maybe four or five yards. Obviously, you want to score, but you'll live with four or five yards, and then you'll take your near next play to the end zone. Well, they still spread things out with three receivers, but they do have Weissman in as the lone setback. It's bounce front, 3-3 three, three on either side. You can run both ways. They only picked up maybe two to three yards. I don't like Weissman out on the edge like that. That's not his game. They've tried to capture the edge in the second half, and they've had no success with it. He's most effective between the tackles when the shoulders are square coming right at you. Now you have to get to the end zone, you've got to kick the three. Manley's the guy, number 11. Keep your eyes on him. Doozy on third down. Feels the pressure. Floats it in the end zone. Incomplete. Wow. Crowd looking for a flag, as is Doozy. No flag out. The Huskers get a stop inside the 10. And here comes the field goal unit for Iowa. So now Nebraska will know exactly what they need to do offensively. And Zaire Anderson, he's had a great game here today. But this coverage may have been the best one. And does he have a little bit of hold to him? Yeah, just a tad down low. Let me tell you all you young defenders out there. If you're going to grab, you grab down low by the waist. That generally doesn't get called. 25-yarder. Kane puts it up and puts it through. So now Nebraska gets the football, and a touchdown would win it for the Huskers. Kirk Ferentz is trying to make the case that the 70,000 or so Iowa fans were trying to make. He thought Zaire Anderson had just enough 
of a tug on the receiver, then maybe a flag should have come out. You could you could see it, and then I mean, not like I've ever done this or anything. No, this is if way off your radar. Screen. If you're going to bend the rules a little bit right. in pass coverage, you bend the rules by staying down below the jersey. That generally doesn't get called. Well, you're a Raider. Raiders play by the rules. We Absolutely. all know that. Absolutely. And we break as many as possible. So now down a field goal, Nebraska gets their chance in overtime number one. Armstrong, play action. Under pressure. And tries to get what he can. And it turns out to be about two yards. Eventually it's Carl Davis that brings him down. And when you're the road team in overtime, and you know a touchdown wins you the game, do you call it differently at all? Are you more aggressive? Do you think maybe you go for it here rather than get a little conservative, knowing not, you only need a field goal to continue? Not right now. Right now, the first position you want to be in is give yourself an opportunity to stay in field goal position. Then secondly, you've got to get the six points. And then you've got to read your team to see where you're at, just in terms of momentum. And that build a little stop start run. Well, he did well just to yes, get to the 20 point yard line. He could have been bottled up for a three or four yard loss. But Drew Ott, that's great hustle by Drew Ott. Drew Ott, the defensive end number 95, he comes right down the line. And if he's not there, who knows with Amir Abdullah? You have to account for the feet right here of Armstrong. Big third down. And a long five. Close to six. Blitz coming. Armstrong. Bullets went over the middle and there's Teddy Bell inside the ten. First and goal, Huskers. Nice throw. That's a bullet right on spot. And Bell is able to clear back inside. But the protection seems to be breaking down. He just pulls up his feet. That's a heck of a throw. 80 is your inside receiver. They were playing a zone. He felt the hole in the zone and found it. That's really well done by Bell. Play action. Armstrong on a rollout. Throws one to the pylon. It's bubbled. And it's held on to. Kenny Bell's got a touchdown. Nebraska wins it in overtime. That overtime win is on Armstrong because it was his feet that made the play. Now the officials are getting together. Will they review to make sure that Kenny Bell had complete control of the football before he stepped out of bounds? He bobbles it just a bit right there. Whoa. That's worth another look. They'll have to clear the field as well as Nebraska emptied their bench and celebrated a win. We've got press out on the fields. We've got the officials. They immediately got together. That ball, okay, right here. That would be that would be six. That would be six. He has the ball behind the line of scrimmage, and his feet are down. They would call that six. Well, it was ruled a touchdown on the field. After review, the ruling on the field's confirmed. Touchdown. And there it is. Game over. They made sure they went upstairs just to have replay confirm it, and we get a thrilling end in overtime here in Iowa City. Nebraska down 24-7 at one point, Matt. They come from behind and survive even a late lead taken by Iowa to force overtime and get the win. Well, they did everything they had to do. They figured out the problems in the second half just in terms of defending the edge, and then... Armstrong's the difference in the game. Nebraska wins it in overtime. Coming up next, college football presented by K Jewelers continues. Stanford, UCLA. We head to the Rose Bowl. So long from Iowa City.